Hello friends. This is the fanfic club. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto inherited the perfect uplimiting bloodline? Here is short summary. Naruto is a descendant of legendary shinobis, he was given the knowledge of two powerful shinobis his own parents, he possesses two abilities one of which is the legendary bloodline and the other has been enhanced within him, he has been trained by skilled shinobis and he has a dream which he will achieve and that is to become the next god of shinobi. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. The history of the Uzumaki clan There once was a shinobi village known as Uzushio where it was also the capital city of the land of whirlpools, it was founded by just one shinobi clan, the Uzumaki clan who used to live in the land of fire where they were a part of the legendary Senmaki clan. Ever since the age of shinobi had began thanks to Hagoromo Otsutsuki the sage of six paths who was also known to the world as the first god of the shinobi by giving mankind the power of chakra. The Senmaki clan has always been at war with the Uchiha clan but eventually some members within the Senmaki clan wanted to leave the land of fire before both clans ended up wiping each other out or if another clan does it when they are in a weakened state because of their consent fighting however the other members saw this as cowardly and they refused to leave with them especially from the Uchiha clan. So the legendary Senmaki clan was divided into two separate clans with those who decided stay in the land of fire took up the Sen part of their former name and they became known to the world as the Senju clan while those who left to travel to the land of whirlpools took up the Maki part of their former name and they became known to the world as the Uzumaki clan. Many years later at the end of the Warring States period Hashirama Senju the leader of the Senju clan one of the founders of the village hidden in the leaf Konoha and its leader the Hokage formed an alliance with Uzushio and it was though this alliance Hashirame married Mito Uzumaki, the daughter of Ashina Uzumaki who was the leader of the Uzumaki clan. Ashina is the elder Uzumaki member who you see in a picture standing next to Hashirama. The Uzumaki clan were renowned throughout the entire shinobi world for their great fuinjutsu skills however it also led to their destruction because during the second great ninja war three shinobi villages Hoshi, Kusa, Taki who were all jealous of Uzushio as it was being called the sixth great nations and so they banded together in a surprise attack on Uzushio as somehow they were able to get past the barrier jutsu as there was seal formation that surrounded the entire island place there by the Uzumaki clan which had protected them and afterwards those who survived the village's destruction were scattered across the globe seeking refuge. However before the fall of Uzushio the clan leader of the Uzumaki clan had sent Kashina Uzumaki to Konoha so she could become their Jinchuriki for the Kayubi. Because only someone who possess a strong body could contain the tailed beast which every single member of the Uzumaki and Senju clans possessed as well as she also possesses a unique ability that only few members of the Uzumaki clan have which was known as, Chakra Mold. Where she is able to mold her chakra into weapons which she can use in battle as well as use them as chains which she can then restrain and suppress anyone else's chakra even including the nine-tailed demon fox. The history of the Senju clan The first Hokage Hashirama. Senju who was known to the shinobi world as the warden of the forest, because of him possessing the unique ability that only he possessed called wood style. And he was also known as the second god of shinobi. Because of how powerful he was and after he and Madara of the Uchiha clan formed the village hidden in the leaves Konoha he became the first Hokage and his wife the first Jinchuriki for the Kayubi Mito Senju. Formerly known as Mito Uzumaki had two sons both of whom were named after Hashirama's brothers that were killed back during the warring era with their first born son name was Kawarama Senju after Hashirama's older brother who would marry Yuki who was from the Serutobi clan who possessed the blaze style bloodline and along with the Shimura clan were the first two clans to join Konoha after it was founded and unlike the Serutobi clan the Shimura clan didn't possess a bloodline but instead they had the enhanced wind style techniques known as air style, and eventually they would have a son of their own name Arashi Senju who would eventually marry Himeji Shimura and have a son named Minato Senju who would be known to the shinobi world as, the yellow flash of the leaf. Hashirama and Mito's second son was named Itama Senju after Hashirama's younger brother who would marry Toshi Yamakami who originally came from the land of earth at the village hidden in the stones, Iwa and her clan possessed the steel style bloodline and eventually they would have two children of their own first a daughter named Tsunade Senju and then a son named Nawaki Senju. 
The second Hokage Tobarama Senju who was the younger brother of Hashirama Senju and was known to the shinobi world as the blue warrior because of how powerful he was with water style jutsu and he would marry Subaki Uzumaki and they would have a daughter named Mina Senju who married Akio of the Hitaki clan where she took up his last name and became Mina Hitaki and they had a son together named Sakumo Hitaki who would become known to the shinobi world as the white fang of the leaf and he would marry Momoko Namita and they eventually had a son of his own name Kakashi Hitaki who would be known to the shinobi world as the copy cat ninja the history of the Uchiha clan Back during the Warring States period Izuna of the Uchiha clan had a son before he was killed by Tobarama Senju whose name was Tajima Uchiha named after Izuna's father and once Konoha was founded and Madara Uchiha had left the village Tajima was made into the new clan head of the Uchiha clan. Tajima would marry Mai Uchiha and they would have son named Kagami Uchiha who became one of Tobarama's six students because even after the Senju and the Uchiha clans had formed their alliance with each other Tobarama still held distrust for the Uchiha after fighting against them for most of his life and so Hashirama assigned Kagami to be on Tobarama's team to improve his relationship with the Uchiha clan by having one as a student. Kagami would eventually get married to Hasaki Serutobi and they would have two children of their own with their firstborn being a son whose name was Fugaku Uchiha who would be known to the shinobi world as the wicked eye of the leaf, and the other was a daughter whose name was Akarui Uchiha. Akarui would eventually get married to Kurai Uchiha where they would have a son together whose name was Shisui Uchiha who would be known to the shinobi world as Shisui the teleporter. And as for Fugaku he would eventually get married to Makoto Uchiha and they would have a son together as well whose name was Itachi Uchiha who would be known to the shinobi world as, Red Glare of the Leaf. In the Land of Fire there is where the village hidden in the leaves known as Konoha is located and it is also where Naruto Namikaze the third Jinchuriki to the nine tail fox the Kayubi lives and is hated. On October 10 the day that Naruto was born on the Kayubi had escaped from its previous Jinchuriki who was Naruto's own mother Kashina Senju formerly known as Kashina Uzumaki. The Kayubi suddenly appeared in the middle of Konoha and began attacking the village and it wouldn't stop until all of Konoha was destroyed but thankfully the Kayubi was eventually stopped by the fourth Hokage Minato Senju also known as the Yellow Flash of Leaf. Minato split the Kayubi's chakra into two separating the yin from the yang half and then he sealed the yin half of the Kayubi's chakra within himself which he would take with him to his grave while sealing the yang half of the Kayubi's chakra within Naruto who was his own son. As Minato died his soul was taken by the Shinigami and sealed within the belly of the Shinigami taken the yin half of the Kayubi's chakra with him as payment for using the reaper death seal. Many people would assume that by splitting the Kayubi's yin and yang chakras Minato had made the Kayubi far weaker which was true but only temporary as tailed beasts are capable of regenerating their lost chakra but without any yin chakra the Kayubi within Naruto would regenerate more yang chakra to regain its lost strength making the Kayubi as strong as it was before the split. What people didn't know was that during the nine months that Kashina was pregnant with Naruto, the Kayubi's chakra had mixed with Naruto's own chakra and when he was made into the Kayubi's new Jinchuriki it caused something within Naruto's body to change and became far stronger granting him things that neither of his parents possessed. Before Minato's death he had also sealed the last of both his and Kashina's chakra within Naruto which form into shadow clones in hopes of meeting him again when he was older but unknown to anyone else there was already another power within Naruto's body which connected with Minato and Kashina chakra that were connected to Naruto's chakra forming something like an circle made of chakra which caused the shadow clones of Minato and Kashina to disperse however usually when in shadow clones disperse any memories or knowledge that they had gained were to be transferred over to the original however both Minato and Kashina were die and their chakras were stuck inside the seal so instead all of Minato's and Kashina's memories and knowledge were granted to Naruto however he wouldn't have them immediately as they need a trigger something to remind them within Naruto. After the Kayubis. Attack on Konoha the third Hokage Hirazen Serutobi. Took Naruto and even though he wanted to adopt Naruto. Into the Serutobi clan and he could claim him since Naruto had blood ties to them as his great grandmother Yuki Senju was a member before she married Kawarama Senju however he knew that he couldn't as the Jinchuriki is important to the strength of Konoha and if he tries to then every other clan within Konoha and all civilian families who are on the Konoha council would think that he was trying to make the Serutobi clan the strongest clan within Konoha. 
after all Hiruzen had also taken up leadership of the village once again because of Minato's death and Danzo could do the same as Naruto also had blood ties with his clan as his grandmother Himeji Shimura was a member before she married Arashi Senju. So Hiruzen had no other choice but to place Naruto in care at Konoha Orphanage and he had no choice but to change Naruto's last name to be neither Senju or Uzumaki to make sure that no one would know that Naruto was in fact Minato and Kashina's son. Because if word got out then people like Danzo and others would try to use Naruto to gain more power within Konoha since he was the heir to both the Senju and Uzumaki clans and now the Jinchuriki for the Kyubi. But to also keep him safe as Minato had many enemies especially from Iwa because of his actions back during the Third Great Shinobi War and so Hiruzen gave Naruto a different last name which was Namikaze. Seven years after the Kyubis attacked the Konoha Shinobi Academy which was located nearby the Hokage Mansion is where children from both shinobi clans and non-shinobi families are taught and trained to become a shinobis and kunoichis for the Hidden Leaf Village in order to protect it, its people in the land of fire at any costs. Naruto Namikaze was not your average kid and not just because he was the Jinchuriki for the Kyubi. No he was not average because he was also a genius but not like Kakashi Hitaki. Itachi Uchiha or even his own father Minato Senju instead Naruto was actually even more of a prodigy than any of them because whenever a teacher at Konoha Academy would ask him something or to do something that they knew they hadn't taught him, Naruto would somehow always be able to answer or do it and whenever they asked Naruto how he would always give them the same answer, I don't know how I know how to do it I just do. Even though the many shinobi and civilians who stupidly hated Naruto because he's the Jinchuriki for the Kyubi believing that he was actually the Kyubi but in human form they knew that if they did anything to him then they would receive the third Hokage's wrath and maybe others who knew about how important Naruto was to the strength of the village. However when those same people learn about Naruto being a prodigy like no other it made them believe that since Naruto was actually the Kyubi in a human form it was trying to learn everything it can to become stronger so it can get its revenge on them by finishing what it started seven years ago and so they chose to finish the Kyubi off before it could regain its strength and afterwards the third Hokage would see what they did was for the good of the village. So on one night when Naruto was walking home after having dinner at his favorite restaurant which was Ichiraku Ramen before two chunin who were hired by the mob and were promised that if they bring Naruto to them at an abandoned warehouse then they would be promoted to the rank of Janin thanks to their connections to the civilian council. So when they had found Naruto they dragged him into a nearby alley before knocking him out and took him to the mob and once they handed Naruto over to the mob they began to beat him brutally. As the mob attacked Naruto something within him broke and another thing else awaken and suddenly wooden spikes burst out from Naruto's back impaling the members of the mob that were surrounded him killing them and as for the rest of the mob they just stood and stare in shock as the only person in history to possess the ability of wood style was the first Hokage Hashirama Senju and they were shocked again when Naruto stood up and as he did the mob saw that all the bruise and cuts they gave him began to heal itself and soon not even a scar was visible. The mob then try to run away like the cowards they were seeing that things have turned around for the worst for them but then even more wooden spikes shot out of the ground hitting every single one of them and killing all of them afterwards Naruto passed out on the floor. At Konoha's hospital as Hiruzen look at the resting Naruto he couldn't help but be angrily at himself as he had believed that the villagers wouldn't be stupid enough to see Naruto as the Kyubi but rather than the one who keeps the tailed beast away from them. Since Naruto was the Jinchuriki for the Kyubi the risk of him being kidnapped or killed were high which was the reason why he doesn't live in Konoha's orphanage and instead had caretakers. However Hiruzen had found out the person who was supposed to take care of Naruto this week was giving a large sum of money to make sure that Naruto would be on the street to allow the two chunin who were hired to grab him. Once Hiruzen was alerted to what happened to Naruto when a shinobi who was near the abandoned warehouse sensed a large burst of chakra and Hiruzen was told that there was something he that needed to see with his own eyes or else he wouldn't believe it so Hiruzen went to the abandoned warehouse but he wasn't expecting to see wooden spikes impaled into bodies which he immediately knew that it was legendary wood style of the first Hokage Hashirama Senju. How is this possible since wood style isn't actually a bloodline but instead it was just a mutation as only Lord Hashirama possessed it and if it was an actual bloodline then why didn't Lord Hashirama's sons Itama and Kawarama or his grandchildren Tsunade, Nawaki or even his Minato inherit it while Naruto did? Hopefully it isn't because of those experiments and if it was then who performed them on him? Orochimaru or Danzo and if so when did they do it? Hiruzen thought, trying to understand. Ooh where are I? Naruto asked as he slowly woke up. Naruto my boy, you have finally awakened. I was so worried for you, Hiruzen said in a kind tone. 
W what happened? Naruto asks while he rubs both of his eyes. Naruto, my Anbu found you unconscious inside an abandoned warehouse, said Hiruzen. Oh yeah, said Naruto. Naruto there were dead bodies of villagers all around you and they were all impaled by wooden spikes so please tell me honestly what happened in that warehouse. Hiruzen asked in a serious tone but also curious. All I remember was that I was walking home from Ichiraku Ramen before two men dragged me to a dark alley and knocked me out and when I woke up I was surrounded by a mob then all of them attacked me then everything went dark and now woke up here, said Naruto. Hum I know that the Kyubi didn't take control over him or else everyone in the entire village would have felt its dark chakra perhaps the assault caused Naruto to awaken the wood style ability. But why does he possess it while everyone else in his family besides Lord Hashirama doesn't Hiruzen thought curiously. Naruto you seem to possess the extremely rare ability known as wood style just like the first Hokage Hashirama Senju, said Hiruzen. Really? That's awesome. Naruto said excitedly. Because of which you will need to be trained to master it and I know some people who can help you, Hiruzen said with his usually kind smile. Alright I'm going to a super powerful shinobi just like the first Hokage, Naruto said excitedly. Naruto, you'll have to be moved to a new home so you can be trained there, said Hiruzen. Where will it be? Naruto asked curiously. Your new home will be at the Senju clan compound, said Hiruzen. Why there? Isn't that where the first and second Hokage and the rest of their clan lived? Naruto asked curiously. I might as well let him know about him being a member of the Senju clan for now, I'll tell him who exactly he's related to when he's older, thought Hiruzen. That's because Naruto you are also a member of the Senju clan as well, Hiruzen said, shocking Naruto. What? How is that possible? My last name is Namikaze, not Senju. Naruto asked curiously. That is because I was the one who gave you the Namikaze name Naruto, Hiruzen said, shocking Naruto again. But why did you do that? Naruto asked curiously. Because Naruto you are a Senju, if any of the other villages found out about you then they would send assassins after you fearing that since you could rebuild the Senju clan or they could send their shinobi to try and kidnap you and bring you back to their village to use you to rebuild the Senju clan there instead and now with you possessing the legendary ability of wood style they'll most certain send their shinobi to capture you, Hiruzen explained. Oh I see, Naruto said, now worried about being kidnapped. But don't worry Naruto as not only are you going to move to the Senju clan compound but also you'll be trained by two shinobi that will help you greatly, said Hiruzen. Really? That's awesome. Naruto said excitingly, I will make sure that your legacy will be taken care of Lord Hashirama, Lady Mito, Kawarama, Yuki, Arashi, Himeji, Minato, Kashina, thought Hiruzen. Hiruzen was waiting for one of his oldest and closest friends who he had summoned to meet with him at his office Kosuke Maruboshi who was known as the Eternal Genin because despite him being around the same age as the third Hokage he was still in the rank of Genin however that wasn't because of lack of skill, in fact Kosuke was actually a highly skilled shinobi within Konoha instead he chooses to remain in the rank of Genin. The reason why Kosuke was still a Genin is because back when he was still a child, Kosuke unfortunately made a reckless decision which cost him the lives of his two teammates. Ashamed of this mistake, Kosuke felt that he was not worthy of being promoted beyond the rank of Genin. However, despite this, he continued to train to improve his skills, something that was insisted upon him by the second Hokage Tobarama Senju. Just then, the doors of Hiruzen's office opened, revealing Kosuke Maruboshi. Lord Hokage, you wish to see me? asked Kosuke. Yes I did Kosuke, it's a matter of great importance, said Hiruzen. I am ready for whatever mission you have for me, Kosuke said bowing his head at the third Hokage. This isn't your usual mission, Kosuke, I need you to tutor someone, Hiruzen said, surprising Kosuke. I don't know Hiruzen, Kosuke said, remembering back to his two team mates that he had gotten killed. Kosuke you have refused to rise through the ranks and you have lead a team despite your years of experience and training where you have gathered an incredible amount of knowledge, what happens if you fall in battle it would be all lost, it's long past time you take up a student and pass on what you know, said Hiruzen. Who is it that you wish for me to train? Kosuke asked curiously as he knew that Hiruzen wouldn't ask him to train just anyone. Naruto Namikaze, said Hiruzen. Ah the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, said Kosuke. Yes Naruto has shown to be a highly gifted prodigy as it seems he's able to learn things almost immediately, said Hiruzen. 
Makes sense as he is a member of the Senju clan after all and a descendant of Lord Hashirama and the son of Minato and Kashina, Kosuke said, shocking Hiruzen. You know. But how? Hiruzen asked curiously. Hiruzen I ain't blind like the rest of the village where some of them only sees the Kayubi when they look at Naruto while I can clearly see that the boy is the spitting image of Minato just with Kashina's eyes, said Kosuke. I see then there is something else you need to know about Naruto, said Hiruzen. What is it? Kosuke asked curiously. Naruto seems to possess the wood style ability just like Lord Hashirama, Hiruzen said, shocking Kosuke. How is it possible? Wood style isn't an actual bloodline but instead just a unique mutation that only Lord Hashirama has ever possessed? Kosuke asked curiously. I don't know how he possesses it but this could be a great opportunity for the village as this could mean that wood style is now an actual bloodline and if Naruto is able to pass it down to his children then we could have a clan full wood style users and also wood style is perfect to help him to control the Kyubi's chakra just like Kashina had with her chakra chains, said Hiruzen. I understand however it will be difficult for me to train him to use wood style, said Kosuke. Don't worry about that Kosuke. I have someone else who can train Naruto to master his wood style ability, said Hiruzen. Who's that? Kosuke asked curiously. Tenzo, Hiruzen said and immediately one of his Anbu Black Ops appeared standing next to Kosuke who was wearing the Anbu uniform with his Anbu mask resembling a cat with green and red intricate markings. What I'm about to tell you. Kosuke is a highly top secret and you must not tell anyone else, Hiruzen said in a serious tone of voice. I understand Lord Hokage, said Kosuke, years ago. My former student Orochimaru Hikura had abducted over 60 children from outside the village for his experiments, where they were injected with some of the Lord Hashirama cells in the hopes that he could replicate Lord Hashirama's ability to use wood style however it didn't work as most of them die all expert for Tenzo here who not only managed to survive those experiments but he also gained the ability to use a weaker version of wood style however here belongs to the the Iberi clan meaning he also possesses the smoke style bloodline, Hiruzen explained while inside he was disgusted by what his former student has done. I see who's better to teach Naruto how to use wood style than someone else who can also use it, However I am curious as to how the council doesn't know about Tenzo here as while I can understand about keeping what Orochimaru had done a secret but the fact that he's a member of the Iberi clan with him possessing smoke style the other enhanced fire style from your clan's blaze style, they would jump at the chance to add a new bloodline within Konoha? Asked Kosuke. You're right Kosuke if they found out that Tenzo is a member of the Iberi clan they would immediately him to get married and either remake the Iberi clan within Konoha or marry into another clan allowing them to possess smoke style however I believe that it's up to Tenzo if he wants have a family in the village considering what Orochimaru a former shinobi of Konoha did to him, so Tenzo you understand everything. Here is an AAK. Yes Lord Hokage, I'll gladly train Naruto to the best of my abilities, Tenzo said, nodding his head. I will go into detail about Naruto's training under Kosuke and Tenzo in future chapters where there may flashbacks. Five years later it has been five years since Naruto had awakened the legendary bloodline known as Wood Style and started living at the Senju clan compound and Hiruzen had assisted Kosuke to move into the Senju clan compound since he was also assigned to be Naruto's caretaker and with the Anbu Black Ops member Tenzo to train him and Hiruzen had given Kosuke some scrolls from the Serutobi clan about how to use the Blaze style since Naruto will possess that as well as his great grandmother was from the Serutobi clan. Naruto had to still attend Konoha Academy although he didn't have to attend every lesson since he was being teached by Kosuke and the main reason why he had to attend Konoha Academy was because Hiruzen wanted Naruto to make friends which he did making two close friends Shikamaru of the Nara clan and Choji of the Akamichi clan. Naruto had became friends with them around the time they first started to attend Konoha Academy as a few days after they began going to the academy Naruto saw a group of kids starting to pick on Choji because of his weight however Shikamaru who was already friends with Choji because of their fathers were best friends stood up to them however unfortunately they were outnumbered by 2 to 8 but that was when Naruto show up. Naruto stood between the group of bullies from Shikamaru and Choji and he told the bullies to leave them alone or else however they all just laugh at Naruto and they decide to beat him up as well since their parents had told them that they should stay away from Naruto but if they go home and tell their parents that they had beaten Naruto up then their parents would be proud of them for it. 
However as they all changed at Naruto they were all taken down by him without any effort thanks to all of his training while Shikamaru and Choji just watch in amazement afterwards the bully's parents went to Hiruzen and told him that Naruto had attacked their innocent children for no good reason expected for him being a demon, after all. They demanded that Naruto should be kicked out of Konoha Academy and thrown into prison for what he did to their innocent children but Hiruzen revealed to them that one of his Anbu Black Ops members had seen what happened with them bullying two other children and Naruto simply defended them which was backed by Shikamaru and Shoji parents. Afterwards Naruto became friends with Shikamaru and Shoji whose parents didn't care that Naruto was the Jinchuriki for the Kayubi since they didn't see Naruto as the tailed beast in human form but instead they saw him as the one who kept the Kayubi sealed away since they knew that if they thought Naruto was the Kayubi but in human form then they should also think that if they seal a kanai into a sealing scroll then that would mean that the scroll is the kanai and they know that Naruto is the son of Minato and Kashina because of his looks. In the classroom today was a special as this day for Naruto's class was to take the genin exam to see if they were finally ready to finally become a shinobi or a kunoichi of the hidden leaf village. The genin exam itself was made up in different parts with first begin a writing test to see what they know, then a throwing test with both kanai and shuriken, a spar match against their instructors and finally they must perform the three techniques that all academy students are taught during their seven years of attending the academy. First was the body replacement technique, next was a simple clone technique, then they must escape from a low-level genjutsu that one of the instructors would perform on them and lastly if they are able to they can perform any other kind of jutsu that they may know to earn extra credit which was usually done by children who are from clans or children whose parents were shinobi but ain't a part of any shinobi clans. Naruto was 5 foot 4 tall making him one of the tallest of his age group and he was quite muscular developed for his age possessing an array of well-developed abdominal muscle. He has a fair complexion with his hair was a shaggy style similar to Minato's hairstyle however with Kashina's violet eyes. Naruto wears a black hoodie with the Uzumaki clan logo on the right shoulder like many people in Konoha has out of respect for their fallen ally, white pants tucked into black and red boots with white soles, a matching red wristband on the right arm, a brown bag over his lower back and a dark blue pouch over the right leg. Naruto's outfit in this story is the youth striker from the Naruto to Boruto. Shinobi striker game. As Naruto entered the classroom seeing that not everyone was there yet he went to his usual spot as well he placed his arms behind his head and placed his feet on his desk and waited for the genin exam to begin. Today's the day, Naruto said to himself quietly. Not long after Naruto arrived the next person was Sasuke who was loved by almost everybody in the entire village because he was from the mighty and powerful Uchiha clan who were one of the two clans that founded Konoha however Sasuke was loved by almost everybody because he was one of the last few of the Uchiha clan within Konoha because four years ago on one fateful night Sasuke's older brother. The Uchiha prodigy Itachi murdered almost every single other member of the Uchiha clan including their own parents and on that very night Sasuke dedicated his life to vengeance by vowing that he would become far stronger so he could get revenge on Itachi for what he had done to their clan and once he does he would then rebuild the Uchiha clan stronger than ever before however Sasuke wasn't close to any of the remaining members of the Uchiha clan who were all children because of their hatred towards Itachi for killing their family members and while they hadn't said and done anything to Sasuke since like them he had also lost his parents because of Itachi. They had avoided him because he reminds them of Itachi. Itachi didn't kill every Uchiha in this story instead he killed most of them expect for the kids like Teiko Uchiha who was a character in Jiraiya's novel within Tsunade's Infinite Tsukuyomi Dream where he was a member of Sasuke's team within Konoha military police forces. As usual Sasuke ignored those few who were staring at him and just like Naruto he went straight to his usual spot and stayed there waiting for the genin exam to begin. After was Kiba of the Inazuka clan who were a clan that is well known for their use of ninja hounds as fighting companions and they are also well known for their wild personalities and their alpha complex meaning that they believe who is the strongest should get whatever they want because they are the alpha and Kiba truly believed that he is a alpha as he is one of the strongest in their class however he has never won a single fight against either Naruto or Sasuke. After him was Hanada of the Hyuga clan which was a clan that was well known throughout the entirely shinobi world for their taijutsu fighting style the gentle fist, and their bloodline the Byakugan. Hanada was looked down upon within the Hyuga clan because of her lack of self-conscious and strength however. It has never stopped her from trying to become stronger. To prove to everyone that she wasn't useless and would 
be a great clan head in the future and Naruto had inspired her as years earlier Naruto had saved Hanada from a group of bullies that were picking on her because of her unique eyes which every member of the Hyuga clan possess until Naruto show up and protected her from the bullies afterwards he told her that the bullies were idiots as they couldn't tell the differences between from weird to unique which is also the reason why she has a crush on him. The next person to arrive was Shino of the Aburame clan who was very quiet and sometimes off-putting to other people and just like most member of the Aburame clan, just the rest of his clan Shino was infused with a special breed of insects called Kakaichu that use his body as a neat and feed on his chakra living in a form of symbiosis and in return they attack and do other tasks as he commands forming his main fighting style. The next two were Shikamaru and Choji who when they saw Naruto went over and sat next to him. The final two to arrive was Sakura Haruno and Ino of the Yamanaka clan who burst into the classroom after racing each other to get to the classroom first as they both wanted to sit next to Sasuke as they both had a huge crush on him which was the main reason why they wouldn't best friends anymore but instead rivals for his affection. Sakura was an average normal girl who was from a civilian family where her family hadn't been shinobi and kunoichi for many generations as they only began to be shinobi and kunoichi not long after the Haruno family had moved to Konoha after it was founded. Ino was well known in her class for being a huge gossip but it wasn't entirely her fault because it runs in her family as her father Inochi Yamanaka who is best friends with Shikamaru and Choji fathers as they are teammates known as Ino Shika Cho where they are known for their great teamwork and using their clan's techniques with one another. He is also an elite member of Konoha Intelligence Division for his mastery over their clan's special technique which allow them to enter someone else's mind and obtain intel from them so wanting to know everything about people was in her blood. As the two instructors finally entered the room, all the students stopped talking immediately and waited for the instructors to begin their genin exam so they could finally become a shinobi or a kunoichi of the Hidden Leaf Village. All right everyone. Today is the day you all have been watching to see if you are ready to become a shinobi and kunoichi for our great village," Aruka said with a smile which caused most of the students to smile thinking they were going to pass the genin with ease. Okay so let's begin the genin exam with the writing test. I will hand out the exam papers and once everyone has one you can begin," Mizuki said before he handed each student an exam paper. Okay you all can begin," said Aruka. As Naruto began the exam he felt something annoying at the back of his head and he knew what exactly it was. Someone was trying to cast a genjutsu over him maybe in hopes to make him fail the genin exam however they weren't aware that he was in a way immune to almost all types of genjutsu as whenever someone tries to use a genjutsu on him Naruto would always get an annoying feeling at the back of his head which basically helps him by alerting him that there was someone who was trying to use genjutsu on him so the only question who was trying to fool him. So Naruto used his sensing ability to find whoever it was and he found it to be Mizuki which didn't surprise him at all because he knew Mizuki hated him greatly like most of the village so Naruto ignore the annoying feeling in his head and just continue the exam but it did make him wonder why was Mizuki risking his job and shinobi career like this just to be an annoyance to Naruto like always. Naruto had finished the exam first and just kept quiet. To wait for everyone else so after a bit when everyone else had finally finished they all handed in their exam paper to Mizuki and Aruka told everyone to follow him to do the next part of the genin exam but before Naruto left he saw Mizuki looking down at his exam paper and Naruto could tell Mizuki had two things on his mind with the first being anger because his genjutsu didn't work at all and the other was curious as to why did his genjutsu failed. Naruto then caught up with everyone else outside at the place where they were taught to use kanai and shuriken probably which caused Naruto to sign as he could already tell that today is going to be very slow and annoying. Alright everyone this part of the test is to see your skill with kanai and shuriken, Aruka said as he held both weapons in his hands. Aruka then walked towards a table and put the kanai and shuriken onto it and then he took out a pen and a piece of paper which had all of his students names on it. When I call out your name you will come here and use these kanai and shuriken and to begin the test, said Aruka. Once Aruka began to call out each student's name and each of them took their turn at the test the ones that had only civilian parents managed to get some of their kanai and shuriken to hit the targets while the children with shinobi parents but weren't part of a clan managed to do better because they got training outside of the academy and as for the children who came from clans they got even better score while having only a few of their kanai and shuriken miss. Okay next Sasuke Uchiha please come here and pick up the kanai and shuriken, Aruka said which caused all of Sasuke's fangirls to scream happily the moment Aruka had said Sasuke's name. 
Once Sasuke pick up the kanai and shuriken he began the test first he used the kanai and managed to get all of them to hit their target and even able hit the center five time next he picked the shuriken and just like before he managed to hit all the targets as well as the center a couple times. Once Sasuke finished all of his fangirls let out a lone scream and then began to praise him for his coolest, while most of the boys just look at him with awe for his skill while also jealous because of all of his many fangirls and as Sasuke walk back to where he was earlier as well as ignore all the stares he got from almost everyone. Okay now the last is Naruto Namikaze, said Iruka. As Naruto walked towards the table he pick up the kanai and shuriken where he first used the kanai just like Sasuke and like him Naruto managed to hit all of the targets and he even managed to hit the center seven times and as he pick up the shuriken and he also managed to hit each of the targets also as hit the center more times than Sasuke did. As Naruto walked back over to Shikamaru and Choji who smiled at him. He saw that Sasuke's fangirls had a look of annoyance since Naruto had beaten their Sasuke's score. He then saw that some of the other boys look at him with awe for his skill but while some of them were annoyed that Naruto had also beaten their score while the others were happy since he had also beaten Sasuke's score and damaged his ego. Naruto saw that Sasuke was annoyed which didn't surprise him as over the years Sasuke has consistently tried to beat Naruto most likely using him as a stepping stone to improve himself which Naruto didn't mind it as long as he wasn't annoying about it and luckily for Naruto he wasn't and Naruto saw that where Mizuki did he best to look calm Naruto knew that inside he was angrily which made Naruto curious as to what Mizuki was planning. Iruka then told the class to follow him for the next part of the exam as they arrive at the taijutsu training ground where Aruka began to tell that they will have to fight twice and first they would have to fight another student it was boys versus boys and girls versus girls and afterwards they would have to fight against Aruka or Mizuki. As Naruto watched the fights between his classmates and he found them to be boring especially the ones with a civilian child against another they just acted like two normal children fighting and as for the fights with child from a clan was up against a civilian kid they ended quickly with the person who was from a clan winning of course. When it was finally Naruto's turn he was up against a civilian boy called Ginga Raymond who looked overly confident and just as they entered the ring Ginga told Naruto that he has been hard training with father and older brother who were both shinobi because the person who he wanted to fight the most was Naruto because Ginga and his friends were bullies however they were always stopped by Naruto and if they try to beat him they would always lose. Naruto had never liked Ginga Raymond not just because he was a bully but because there was something about Ginga which greatly annoyed him and unknowing to Naruto it was because Ginga was the son of Kuya Raymond who used to bully Kashina when she had first moved to Konoha however Kashina easily beat them up but afterwards Kuya went crying to his older brother who was already a genin. So the two ambush Kashina as she was walking home and Kuya's older brother attack her however Kashina managed to beat him up as well which caused the two brothers to run away and Kashina saw Minato was watching everything on a tree branch and that was because Minato had overheard the two brothers and he planned on stopping them but by the time he got there he saw Kashina had beaten up the older brother. As Aruka shouted begin Ginga ran straight at Naruto thinking that with all of his training with father and older brother Naruto wouldn't be any challenge for him and he wanted to make Naruto suffer soon as possible but then Naruto appeared on his right side and with one punch to his face which sent Ginga flying out of the ring and unconscious. As Naruto just stood there looking at his now defeated opponent he let a sign. He was hoping for something exciting and as he walked back over to Shikamaru and Choji, he muttered under his breath, that was disappointing. As for Naruto's classmates they were shocked because even they knew Naruto was strong they barely saw Naruto move from his spot and Sasuke who was both shocked and angered by Naruto's performance because it just show how outclassed he was compared to Naruto and as for the instructors Aruka and Mizuki were shocked as well as they didn't expect Naruto to be that fast and strong however Mizuki was angered Naruto's performance. Ok everyone after I take Ginga Raymond to the nurse office we'll began the next part of the taijutsu part of the exam, Aruka said as he went over and pick up Ginga and then he did a hand signs and in a proof of smoke both Aruka and Ginga were gone. A couple minutes later another proof of smoke appears revealing Aruka who told the class that he is going to read out half of the list of names that he has and once he calls out their name they'll walk behind him meaning that they are going against him and remaining people will fight against Mizuki. Ok now we need two lines, one on the right side and the other on the left side, Aruka told the class which they did. All of the future clan heir and heiress as well as a couple of civilian children were in Aruka's group while Naruto and the other children were in Mizuki's group, 
Naruto was going to be last in his group so he decided to watch the matches to see any flaws that he could use against Mizuki when it was finally his turn and Naruto found that whenever Mizuki blocks someone's attack he exposes his right knee and if someone kicks hard enough it cause he to both fall and be in a lot of pain. When it was Naruto's turn and as he walk onto the ring he saw the face expression on Mizuki's face change from the nice and happy teacher to a guy who wants to kill someone and that someone was none other than Naruto. From the look in Mizuki's eyes Naruto knew that he wasn't going to hold back against him expert for using ninjutsu or genjutsu so Naruto decided that he wouldn't either. Ready Naruto? Mizuki asks in a nice tone of voice but Naruto could see through it. Of course, Naruto said as he went into his fighting stance which he spread his legs apart, crouched down a little, his right arm is bent upward with this hand seemingly holding up two fingers while his left arm tucked against him against his toward his torso and it made everyone wonder where did he learn that fighting stance from because it wasn't taught at the academy. Mizuki went first by running straight at Naruto and once he was close enough he sent a kick to Naruto's chest but instead of making contract Naruto's image just faded away like a after image which shocking Mizuki but before he could even think Naruto then appeared behind him and Naruto sent a powerful kick at Mizuki's back right leg causing a lot of pain to Mizuki and making him to fall to the ground. Mizuki became enraged at how he was being beaten by someone who isn't even a genin yet so he sent a strong punch at Naruto hoping to at least hit him once but instead Naruto just grab it and use it to lift himself up and then he did a swing kick to Mizuki's head sending flying a bit to the other side of the ring. As Mizuki picked himself up off the ground he looked straight at Naruto with even more murder in his eyes and changed straight at Naruto who was ready for him but before he could reach him Aruka appeared before him. Mizuki. Stand down right now. Aruka ordered, which made Mizuki stop in his tracks immediately. I'm sorry Aruka, I don't know what came over me, Mizuki said while bowing his head. Later back at the classroom as everyone was sitting down at their desks waiting for Aruka and Mizuki who had returned from the third Hokage for Mizuki's behavior. Okay everyone this is the final part of the genin exam. When I call your name out you will walk to the room next door and that is where you will perform five things. First you will break free from a low-level genjutsu. Second you will do body replacement technique, third you will perform the transformation technique and will be able to change into anyone you see fit and fourth you will perform the stranded, clone jutsu. However there is also a fifth part of the exam which you can choose to take and it is that you can do any other jutsu that you may know for extra credit in their exam, Aruka explained to the class. As Aruka began to call out a name a student got up and left the room and a couple minutes later they return with a headband that Kona has leaf symbol on it and another student did the same after a while some student came back with a headband while others didn't and when it was finally Naruto's turn he did the same as all the other students he got up and went next door and as he entered the room he saw that the third Hokage sitting down by a desk with two Jonin sitting next to him. Well hello Naruto, are you ready to take the genin exam? said Hiruzen. Yes Lord Hokage. Naruto said as he went to the middle of the room. Okay Naruto now normally the first part of the test is for you to break free from a genjutsu however I have been informed by Kosuke that genjutsu doesn't affect you at all, Hiruzen said, shocking the two janin besides him. Yes they don't as whenever Kosuke sensei uses a genjutsu to disguise something it would always look blurry which allows me to know that is a genjutsu or when he uses a genjutsu on me which gives me a small headache, Naruto explained. It's definitely a useful ability to possess, to be immune to genjutsu but still be able to tell if someone is trying to cast a genjutsu on you or tries to trick, Hiruzen thought. So instead I have come up with a slightly different test for you, we will cast a genjutsu over something and all you have to do is tell us what we have cast the genjutsu on, do you understand? Hiruzen asked. Yes Lord Hokage, Naruto said, nodding his head, as the janin on Hiruzen's right side got up and walk a bit towards Naruto the janin then looked back at Hiruzen who gave him a nod telling him to provide which he did by doing the hand signs and casting his genjutsu over the chair at the end of the room to make it look like it was simply a table instead. Naruto looked around for a moment before pointing at the chair and said, it's that. That's correct. Now let's continue with the next test you will perform the body replacement technique with that chair, said Hiruzen. Naruto did the hand signs and in a proof of smoke instead of Naruto standing there it now was the first Hokage Hashirama Senju. Very good Naruto, Hiruzen said as Naruto turned back into himself. Now the fourth part of the exam is that you have to do the clone jutsu, said Hiruzen. Naruto did the hand signs however they weren't the ones for the standard clone technique and, shadow clone jutsu, Naruto said as he created four clones of himself who stood next to him. 
Naruto. How do you know the shadow clone jutsu? Hiruzen asked, surprised. Kosuke sensei thought it was a better technique for me to learn because of the amount of chakra I possess and to help me with my training, Naruto explained. I see most impressive. Now I have to say from the report about your grades at the academy and your scores in the genin exam you have passed with flying colors. However if you want you can do the fifth part of the exam and do any other jutsu that you may know? Hiruzen asked while Naruto released the clone jutsu. I would like to do that, Lord Hokage, said Naruto. I wonder what other jutsus that Kosuke or Tenzo has taught him, Hiruzen thought curiously. Very well and don't worry about any damage if you are going to use a destructive jutsu, said Hiruzen. As Naruto turned around to face the wall he did a couple of hand signs and said, fire style, fox fire jutsu. Naruto manifested ten small fireballs in a circle in front of them and he launched them straight at the wall causing an explosion which shook Konoha Academy causing some people to panic. Hiruzen and the two Jonin just stared at Naruto in shock from what he had just done as they weren't expecting a ninjutsu of that level being used by an academy student. Naruto. Where did you learn that jutsu from as I know Kosuke wouldn't know that ninjutsu since he doesn't have fire chakra nature? Hiruzen asked curiously. Through research I discovered it at the library and I have mastered it as you have seen, Naruto said, shocking Hiruzen and the two Jonin. Remarkable but I shouldn't be surprised after all he's a member of the Senju clan and a descendant of Lord First, thought Hiruzen. I see well in any case you perform it perfectly so here is your headband showing that you are now a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village. Hiruzen said as he handed Naruto the headband which he wrapped it around his right arm. Thank you Lord Hokage, Naruto said as he left the room and went back to the classroom. It seems I made the right decision on having Naruto being trained by Kosuke and Tenzo, Hiruzen thought happily. Later back at the classroom after the last couple of students did their final part of the genin exam Aruka got a piece of paper from another instructor which was given to them by Hiruzen. Okay class tomorrow morning I want everyone who has passed the genin exam to come here for team assignment but before you can go I will announce who is this year's rookie of the year, Aruka said which actually got everyone excited wanting to know who it was. The rookie of the year name is Naruto Namikaze, Aruka told them which angered all of Sasuke's fangirls. What? All of Sasuke's fangirls shouted in anger. But Aruka sensei Sasuke deserves the title far more than Naruto does, Sakura said while all the other fangirls nodded their heads in agreement. Well actually Sakura, Naruto got the highest in both grades and in score of the genin exam so he does deserve the rookie of the year title, Aruka said, shocking Sasuke's fangirls. He beat me in everything. How's that possible? I'm a member of the Uchiha clan, I've been training non-stop what am I doing wrong while he's doing correctly, Sasuke thought to himself to figure out how Naruto was able to beat him. Congratulations Naruto you have earned it, Aruka said with a smile before telling the class they can leave. At midnight in Konoha almost every single genin, Chunin and Janin in Konoha was at the Hokage mansion because someone had stolen the forbidden scroll of sealing which contains many dangerous technique inside of it and the third Hokage has ordered all of his shinobi to return the scroll and whoever was the one who stole it be brought to him. Aruka was currently chasing someone through the forest who he believed was the person who had stolen the scroll of sealing from the Hokage's mansion when Aruka finally caught up with who it was. Aruka was shocked. It had to be you, Aruka, Mizuki said while standing on a tree branch. Mizuki. But why? Aruka asks, trying to understand why his old childhood friend did something like this. Because I wanted more power and I promised to bring them this scroll, Mizuki said with an insane grin on his face. Mizuki please think about our friendship, Aruka begged his old friend. Friendship. We were never truly friends I just use you however it wasn't until when the village denied me the position as an academy high instructor despite my performance in the test and then you Aruka made the cut but you only performed well because you had my assistance and finally when Subaki chose you over me that was when I truly started to hate you to the point where I wanted to kill you, said Mizuki. But Mizuki, if I was able to find you so quickly, so will the Anbu and they will execute you for treason, Aruka begged. Ha ha you don't think I plan for this to be able to escape from the Anbu, Mizuki said. Mizuki, who are you working for? Aruka asks, wondering who was the mastermind. As if I would tell you Aruka, said Mizuki. Then what about me sensei? A person behind Mizuki asks which surprised Mizuki and as he turned around to see who it was he saw that it was Naruto who then punched him in the face damaging his nose even more and was strong enough to send Mizuki flying to the ground. 
Why's the demon fox brat here? Mizuki was angry. Naruto. What are you doing here? It's too dangerous for you. Aruka asks while wondering why Naruto was here. Doing one of my duties as a shinobi of the leaf stopping this traitor from stealing the scroll of sealing, Naruto said in a serious tone. Naruto. I'm trying to convince Mizuki to return back to the village without the need of bloodshed, Aruka said, hoping to avoid any fighting. He's a traitor to the hidden leaf village and so he needs to be taken down, Naruto said in a serious tone. Ha ha you think you can beat me just because you somehow managed to be the rookie of the year? Don't think that title makes you a great ninja, it takes power to be that, Mizuki said, sounding more like a madman. For once I actually agree with you sensei, Naruto said, shocking both Uruka and Mizuki. Didn't expect that kind of answer, Mizuki thought but then he realized something that could be fun for him. Hey brat, have you ever wondered why everyone in the village hates you so much and calls you a demon? said with an evil grin. Mizuki don't do it. It's forbidden to speak of IT. Aruka shouted trying to stop Mizuki from revealing the secret about Naruto. I think it's about damn time that the brat finally knows the truth. So Naruto it was because on the night that Kayubi's attack on the village the fourth Hokage defeated it by. But before Mizuki could finish his sentence he was interrupted by Naruto. Sealing it within me which makes me its Jinchuriki, Naruto said shocking both Uruka and Mizuki that he already knew the truth. Naruto. How did you find out about that? Uruka asks curiously as to how Naruto discovered the Kaiubi was inside of him. For a shinobi village it is really bad at keeping, forbidden, secret, said Naruto. It doesn't matter I'm just going kill both of you too and when the Anbu arrive I'll just say that it was the demon brat who stole the scroll and kill you Uruka and when I arrive here and saw you dead on the floor I had no choice but to kill the demon which the village will celebrate and thank me greatly for even and perhaps they'll make me the next Hokage after the old man finally dies, Mizuki said before he began to laugh madly. How far has he gone and how didn't I notice this sooner, Uruka thought to himself. You are far more delusional than I had thought, Naruto said in disgust. Why's that you brat? Mizuki asks angrily. Because you ain't strong enough to take me down, Naruto said in a serious and cold tone. I'll show you. Mizuki shouted angrily as he reached and grabbed one of his Fuma shuriken on his back and threw it as hard as he could at Naruto. Naruto. Move. Aruka shouted, hoping that Naruto would listen to him. However Naruto didn't move at all but instead he just caught it between two of his fingers and thumbs with ease which shocked Mizuki. You call that a throw, Naruto said in a mocking tone before he then threw it back at Mizuki but much faster and even though Mizuki managed to avoid it however he did get a deep cut on his left leg. Ah! Mizuki shouted in pain while he held the cut on his leg. Come on sensei I thought you would be able to dodge that with ease being a chunin and all but I guess I was wrong, said Naruto. Don't underestimate me damn demon. Mizuki shouted as he began doing a couple of hand signs. Earth style. Earth and stone bamboo jutsu, Mizuki said as he clapped his hand against the ground and suddenly four large spikes of earth came out of four separate directions from the ground and around Naruto as well as aim right at him however they never managed to hit Naruto because right before they were about to Naruto jump into the air but Mizuki saw this and began doing another couple of hand signs. Earth style. Rock gun jutsu, Mizuki said just as he fired bullet sized bits of rocks at Naruto, which on its way only expanded even larger. Seeing this, Naruto sent some of his chakra through his red wristband on the right arm as it had a storage seal on it, and in a proof of smoke, Naruto was holding a tanto blade. Naruto channeled his chakra through the tanto blade, which appeared on it, and then he cut each rock that was to close him in half before landing back on the ground. What's going on? How is he able to avoid my attacks so easily? Mizuki thought in shock because any other academy student would have been killed by now. Naruto then stabs the Tonto blade into the ground next to him before he starts doing hand signs before he extends his hands at Mizuki and both of Naruto's palms have a large amount of electricity. Lightning style. Thunderclap arrow jutsu. Naruto said as he then threw lightning as a projectile based attack at Mizuki who was shocked by Naruto's jutsu and it was too fast for him to dodge it and so he was hit directly by it. It's the lightning style jutsu that Boruto uses. As the smoke cleared, it revealed a badly burnt Mizuki who was still alive, but only because Naruto didn't use his full strength in the jutsu. W. Where did he get that kind of jutsu from? Aruka thought in shock. Are you alright, Aruka sensei? Naruto asks, looking at Aruka. 
Yeah but Naruto where did you learn that Judas from? Aruka asked curiously. I didn't learn it, I created it, said Naruto. You created it but how? Aruka asked curiously. Through hard work, the Anbu Black Ops will no doubt be heading here because of my and Mizuki Jutsus so take care of the scroll until they arrive, Naruto said before jumping into the trees and leaving the area. A moments later after Naruto left four members of the Anbu Black Ops appeared. Aruka what exactly happened here? One of the Anbu asked curiously, seeing all the damage. Where do I begin? Said Aruka. Naruto was currently standing in front of Hiruzen to discuss what happened with Mizuki however he decided to talk the next day to let Naruto rest, Hiruzen's Anbu found Naruto eating his lunch at Ichiraku Ramen and they told him that the third Hokage wanted to see him. So here they were and Naruto already knew that this was about last night between him, Aruka and Mizuki who was currently at the Konoha's hospital surrounded by three chunin just in case he tries to escape or to take his own life to prevent the identity of whoever he was working for to be discovered. Naruto I think you know exactly why I have called you here today? Hiruzen asked. Yes Lord Hokage, it is about the event that happened last night, said Naruto. That's correct Naruto, so tell me what happened with Mizuki like how you were able to find him in the first place? Hiruzen asked curiously. Well I had just finished having dinner at Ichiraku Ramen where I then saw lots of shinobi running around and I overheard some of them talking about the scroll of sealing has been stolen so I figured since I'm now a shinobi of the leaf I might as well help, so I began searching for the scroll as well and I sensed Mizuki and Aruka chakras were getting away from the village so I went to them where I found that it was Mizuki who had taken the scroll of sealing, said Naruto. You were able to sense Mizuki and Aruka chakras that far away from the village? Hiruzen asked curiously. Yeah. When Uncle Kosuke and Tenzo Sensei found out that I possess a good sensing ability, they trained me to master it, Naruto explained. Impressive, Hiruzen said while he was also thinking, it seems that Naruto has also inherited Kashina's high sensing ability. Well Naruto thanks to you the scroll of sealing is back where it belongs so as a reward this will go into your record that you completed AS rank mission since the scroll of sealing is extremely important to the village so good Joe. Before Hiruzen was interrupted by someone bursting into the Hokage's office. Today is the day that I finally surpass you old man and become the fifth Hokage. A little boy who had a kanai in his hand said as he burst into the room. Will this ever end? Hiruzen thought as he signed. However as the boy ran at the third Hokage in his attempt at attacking him but because of his long blue scarf he tripped over it and fell straight to the floor. Ow that hurt, the boy said in pain. Sign, I'm getting too old for this, Hiruzen said with his right hand on his forehead. As the boy picks himself up he looks at Naruto and his eyes change from pain to anger. You. You're the one who tripped me and ruined my surprise attack on the old man didn't you? Konohamaru said angrily as he pointed at Naruto. No you trip over your own scarf which by the way you really need to shorten to avoid things like this from ever happening again, Naruto said simply. You did trip me up because there is no way I would fall over something stupid like that, Konohamaru said angrily. Well you did, Lord Hokage, can I leave now? Naruto asks. Yes you may, Naruto, said Hiruzen. Wait not until he apologizes for tripping me over, Konohamaru complained. Just then a man ran in and he was wearing a banana version of Konoha's headband protector which covered all of upper half of his head, pitch black sunglasses similar to the ones that the members of the Abirame clan wear in the standard Konoha uniform but without the flak jacket. Lord Hokage, I am so sorry, he just ran away when my head was turned, said the man. It's alright Ebisu, said Hiruzen. Edisu looked at Konohamaru who was standing next to Naruto and when Edisu realized who Naruto was he gave him the same look that almost everyone else gives him. The Kayubi brat, Edisu thought Anjili. Well I'm waiting for my apology, said Konohamaru. I'm not apologizing for your stupidity, Naruto said as try to walk away but stopped when Konohamaru ran in front of him and stood in his way. Honorable grandson, has, he, done something to you? Edisu asked. He tripped me up and ruined my surprise attack, Konohamaru complained. I don't have time for this kid, Naruto said as he picked Konohamaru up to move him out of the way without hurting him. Put the third Hokage grandson down immediately, Edisu demanded. No doubt now that he knows that I'm the third Hokage's grandson he's going to go on his hands and knees and beg for my forgiveness, Konohamaru thought. Yeah you better put me down now or else, said Konohamaru. 
or else what? Naruto asks. Well my grandfather will fire you for being a leaf shinobi, Konohamaru said smugly. I highly doubt that the third Hokage will fire one of his shinobis just because you can't accept the fact that you trip over your own scarf, said Naruto. Well I am the third Hokage's grandson so you better show me some respect, said Konohamaru. He's starting to sound like a certain annoying pink hair banshee when anyone disagrees with Sasuke, Naruto thought annoyed. Respect is earned not given, kid, Naruto said before he walked towards the door but was stopped again by Edisu. You will show respect to the third Hokage's grandson and apologize to him immediately, Edisu demanded angrily. Yeah how about no, Naruto said before disappearing in a burst of speed and then reappearing behind Edisu and making his way out of the Hokage's mansion. What was that? Both Konohamaru and Edisu thought in shock. Lord Hokage, we must do something immediately for what boy has done, said Edisu. Edisu. Konohamaru did in fact trip over on his own scarf so there's nothing to be done to understand, said Hiruzen. Yes Lord Hokage, Edisu said before turning his attention to Konohamaru. Now then honorable grandson you must avoid that, boy, at all times, he's nothing but trouble and you do wish to become the future Hokage so just follow my teaching and you will be fine. Before Edisu could finish the sentence he was interrupted by the third Hokage. Edisu, Konohamaru is gone, said Hiruzen. What? Where did he go? Edisu shouted in shock. I believe he ran after Naruto, said Hiruzen. I must find immediately. Edisu shouted before he ran straight out of the room. Is he always this loud? Hiruzen said to himself. With Naruto after leaving Hokage's office Naruto makes his way to the training grounds however he knew Konohamaru was following him and was trying to hide by using a fake wooden fence cover to himself. You can come out now. Naruto said as he walked up to the wooden fence, and pulled away at it to reveal Konohamaru. Just as I expected from my new teacher to see through my hiding skill, said Konohamaru. What skill? Anyone could see through it, shinobi or not, Naruto thought before realizing what Konohamaru had just said. Hold up. What do you mean by, new teacher? Asked Naruto. Well after seeing what you did back in my grandpa's office I have decided that you would be a better teacher than Edisu, said Konohamaru. And just like I said back at the Hokage's office I don't have time for this, said Naruto. Wait. You have to train me, said Konohamaru. Why, because you're the third Hokage's grandson, said Naruto. Can you at least help me then, said Konohamaru. Sign, fine I'll help you a bit, said Naruto. Great now when he sees my skill he will change his mind and beg to train me, thought Konohamaru. Two hours later at a training grounds Naruto had his hands behind his back and was dodging all of Konohamaru's attacks which was easy for him and they have been doing this the past 10 minutes and just then Konohamaru collapses from exhaustion. W why can't I hit you? Konohamaru asks while trying to catch his breath. I've been training a lot longer than you have Konohamaru. Naruto said simply before he walked over to a rock and sat on it. Hey, I've been wondering about something, said Naruto. What's that? Konohamaru asked curiously. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? Naruto asked curious. Because I want to become the youngest Hokage, Konohamaru answered proudly. Something tells me that isn't all of it, is it Konohamaru, said Naruto. I want people to stop seeing me as the honorable grandson of the third Hokages but instead I want them to see me as me, said Konohamaru. So he wants to be acknowledged by everyone, it kind of reminds me of well me back when I was his age and I wanted to become the Hokage to get everyone to acknowledge me but now I just don't care what they think of me as why should I prove to a bunch of idiots that I ain't actual demon fox since the only person whose opinion can define me is my own, Naruto thought. Okay but there is something else why did you want me to train you instead of that other guy? Naruto asked curiously. Because he's just like everyone else treating me differently and the reason why I ask is because you don't care that I'm the third Hokage's grandson and after seeing how you got past Edisu so easily I know you would be perfect, said Konohamaru. Okay kid, I will only help you with a couple of things, said Naruto. Really? Konohamaru said happily. Yeah, why not you seem like a good kid, said Naruto. Awesome, Konohamaru shouted happily. One hour later. And that's how you perform the transformation technique, got it, Naruto said, finishing explaining to Konohamaru. Yeah boss, Konohamaru said happily, boss? Naruto asked curious. Well I decided that since instead of calling sensei I'll call you boss, said Konohamaru. 
Anyway, I think that's enough for today, said Naruto. But just then Edisu jumped out from the trees. Honorable grandson, I've been looking everywhere for you, Edisu said as he walked over to Konohamaru and grabbed his wrist to pull him away. Let go of me, Konohamaru said as he tried to break free. Honorable grandson, you must stay away from him, he's nothing but bad news, trust me, said Edisu. He said let go. Naruto said firmly. You stay out of this, Edisu said angrily. I will give five seconds to let go of him or else I'll make you let go, Naruto said firmly. Ha! You may have bested Mizuki but you stand no chance against an elite Jonin like me, Edisu said proudly. Let's see about that, Naruto said before disappearing and reappearing with Konohamaru who looked surprised and confused. How did he get hold of the honorable grandson? Edisu thought in shock. I guess I have to teach you a lesson so you should feel honorable as I am an elite trainer after all, Edisu said as walked towards Naruto and Konohamaru. Wait don't hurt him I will come with you if you do, Konohamaru begged not wanting Naruto to get hurt because of him but suddenly he felt a hand on his shoulder and it was Naruto's. Thanks Konohamaru but I think someone has to put this guy in his place and I'm more than happy to do it, Naruto said as he walked towards Edisu. You should have just allowed the honorable grandson to leave. I wouldn't have to hurt you but now that chance is gone, said Edisu. First his name is Konohamaru Serutobi so use it and secondly you have been asking for this since the moment I met you in the Hokage's office, Naruto said before he disappeared in a burst of speed and did a swing kick to Edisu's head which sent him flying backwards. Wow! Konohamaru thought amazed. Ow what the hell! Edisu said as he rubbed his jaw and got back up. I think you really shouldn't underestimate your opponent, said Naruto. I guess I really shouldn't, however I may not know how you were able to move this fast but it isn't enough to beat me, said Edisu. First he said he's not going to underestimate me and in a second later he underestimates me, what an idiot, Naruto thought annoyed. The third Hokage wouldn't like it if I harm the brat but he seems a bit overconfident with his skills, no doubt because he had managed to defeat that weakly Mizuki and now landed an actual hit on me so in his own good I should show him how a real shinobi do battle, Edisu thought as he changed at Naruto in a jonin level of speed. I guess he's not playing around anymore, Naruto thought as he lifted his arms up just in time to block Edisu's kick and then he pushed him back. Naruto quickly went into his fighting stance and in a burst of speed at Edisu sending many powerful punches and kicks at him which he only managed to block a few before being overwhelmed by Naruto's attacks and suddenly Naruto did a high kick to Edisu chin which sent him in the air and Naruto jump up kick him back down. H he actually managed to do it, Konohamaru thought amazed. Ow that level of taijutsu takes two years to master so how did he do it? thought Edisu. I said it before and I will say it again. Do not underestimate me, Naruto said standing over Edisu before walking away. Wait. Edisu shouted with his remaining strength. Sign. What is it now? Naruto asked annoyed. Where did you learn how to fight like that? Who taught you? Edisu asks curiously. From one hell of a teacher, Naruto said before he left. Wait for me boss, Konohamaru said, running after Naruto. In the Hokage's office there stood all of the Jonin who will become this year's senseis for all those who graduated from the academy this year. Okay everyone, I will now tell you who your students will be in your team number, said Hiruzen. Out of all of the people who, who were standing in front of Hiruzen were three incredibly talented Jonins of the Hidden Leaf Village. First was Kurinai of the Yuhi clan who was one of the best genjutsu user in all of Konoha which is the reason why she is known as the genjutsu mistress and standing next to her was Asuma Serutobi who was the son of the third Hokage and a former member of the twelve guardian ninja who were the bodyguards to the daimyo of the land of fire which earned him the nickname, the blaze guardian. In Naruto both Kakashi and Might Guy have nicknames which are, the copycat ninja, and, Leaf's noble green beast, so I thought why not give Asuma and Kurinai nicknames as well. Finally there was Kakashi Hataki who is one of Konoha's most talented shinobis as he is known throughout all of the shinobi world as, the copycat ninja, and he was the last remaining student of Minato Senju as well as he is the son of Sakumo Hataki who was a famous and powerful ninja of Konoha known as, the White Fang of the Leaf, and the great grandson of the second Hokage Tobarama Senju. Team 7 will be Sakura Haruno, Sasuke Uchiha and Naruto Namikaze and their sensei will be Kakashi Hataki, Hiruzen said, getting a nod from Kakashi. Team 8 will be Kiba Inazuka, Hinata Hayuga and Shino Aburame and their sensei will be Kurinai Yuhi, Hiruzen said, 
getting a nod from Kurenai. Team 9 is currently still active so instead Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akamichi, Shikamare Naru and their sensei will be Asuma Serutobi, Hiruzen said, getting a nod from Asuma. I trust that all of you have a test for your teams, Hiruzen said, getting a nod from everyone, good then after the test return here to inform me if they are ready or not, Hiruzen said before everyone began to leave the Hokage's office. Oh Kakashi, there is something else I need to discuss with you before you leave, said Hiruzen. Of course Lord Hokage, said Kakashi, it's about Naruto, as you know seven years a mob of villagers hired two chunin to kidnap him and bring to them where they attack him, Hiruzen said while inside he was angrily at what those villagers and the two chunin did and when he had found out who the two chunin were he had them punished. Yes I know, Kakashi said while inside he was angrily as Kakashi was one of the anbu who would watch over Naruto but on the night that Naruto was kidnapped, Kakashi was away on a mission and he had only found out what had happened when he returned to the village. But what you don't know is how Naruto was saved, said Hiruzen. That's true I have always wondered how. Kakashi said as when he found out he had wanted to know exactly what happened but the third Hokage refused to tell him or anyone what exactly had happened. When my Anbu found Naruto in the abandoned warehouse they also found those who were responsible for it, however they were dead, Hiruzen said, shocking Kakashi. How's that possible? Did the seal on the Nine Tails Fox weaken and he killed all of them? Kakashi asked concerned for his sensei's son's life. No it didn't as if it did then the whole village would have felt its chakra, they were all killed with wooden spikes, Hiruzen said, shocking Kakashi again. Lord Hokage, are you suggesting what I think you are? Kakashi asks in a shock tone. I am Kakashi, I'm telling you that somehow Naruto possesses wood style just like the first Hokage, Hiruzen said, shocking Kakashi. But how is that possible, Lord Hokage? Wood style isn't actually a bloodline but instead it was a mutation since only Lord Hashirama had possessed it as none other of the Senju clan, Hashirama's children, his grandchildren and Minato sensei inherited it? Kakashi asked curiously. I don't know how it's possible for Kakashi however I can confirm that he doesn't possess it because of those experiments as I had my most trustworthy doctors examine Naruto's blood to see if it's similar to Tenzo's but thankfully it wasn't, said Hiruzen. That's a relief at least, Kakashi said not wanting the reason why Naruto possesses the legendary bloodline was because of those inhuman experiments like his friend and former teammate when he was a member of the Anbu Black Ops. Is there anything else I should know about Naruto Lord Hokage? Kakashi asked curiously. Afterwards I had placed Naruto in the care of Kosuke Maruboshi who has also trained the boy for the past five years with help from Tenzo who has been training him to use his wood style, Hiruzen explained. So I should expect for him to be skilled and to be able to use wood style, said Kakashi. Kakashi there is one other thing you should know, Naruto also knows who his parents are, Hiruzen said, shocking Kakashi once more. How does he know? Who told him? Kakashi asked curiously. No one did as he managed to figure it out by himself, said Hiruzen. How did he manage to figure it out? Kakashi asked curiously. Well it happens like this, said Hiruzen flashback three years ago. At the Senju clan compound Naruto was having his lunch after he had done some training and he was there alone since Kosuke had to go a mission with a team as the area they were going to they needed Kosuke help as he was far more familiar with the area than them so Naruto was home alone but Hiruzen had decided to pay him visit. Hello Naruto, how are you today? Hiruzen asked with a smile. I'm fine Lord Hokage, though there is a impotent I wish to ask you, said Naruto. Oh and what would that be? Hiruzen asked curiously. Is Minato Senju and Kashina Senju my parents? Naruto asks, shocking Hiruzen greatly. How did he figure it out? Hiruzen thought in shock. What are you talking about Naruto? Hiruzen asks curiously while trying not to look shocked. The fourth Hokage, the man who made me into a Jinchuriki, is also my father, Naruto said in a serious tone of voice. So he figures it out by himself but how? Hiruzen thought. It's true Naruto, Minato and Kashina were you parents, said Hiruzen. For a moment the two sat in silence until Hiruzen decided to ask a question. Naruto, how did you figure it out? Hiruzen asked curiously. It wasn't that hard since I do look a lot like the fourth Hokage expected for my eyes which are the same as my mother's but deep down I just knew that it was the truth, Naruto explained. Hiruzen realized something that Naruto had just said about Minato. 
Naruto you call Minato the fourth Hokage while you refer to Kashina as your mother, why don't you refer to Minato as your father? Hiruzen asked curiously. Because he lost the right to call himself my father when he made me into a Jinchuriki, Naruto said angrily, shocking Hiruzen. The current time, Naruto hates Minato sensei, Kakashi said in shock. Yes he does as he blames Minato for everything bad that has happened to him for the first seven years of his life, said Hiruzen. But Minato sensei would have never wanted Naruto to go through all of what had happened to him, said Kakashi. Yes I know and I try to explain that to Naruto but in his eyes Minato chose the village over him as he knows that Minato would have known about how Jinchurikis are treated by people especially if their biju had recently gone on a rampage and had kill people that they loved, said Hiruzen. Lord Hokage. I have to make Naruto understand that Minato sensei didn't have a choice, said Kakashi. That's exactly what I want you to do Kakashi perhaps you can tell him stories about when he was your sensei to help Naruto to know the kind of man Minato was but don't push it too hard Kakashi as you may just end up annoying him and he'll end up not listening to you, said Hiruzen. I understand Lord Hokage, Kakashi said before he left the Hokage's office. With Naruto Naruto was currently sitting down next to Shikamaru and Choji where like almost everyone else were talking about who they were going to be team up with and what their new senseis have planned for them but just then the two most loudest girls Sakura and Ino burst into the classroom and they immediately began fighting over who was going to sit next to Sasuke much his annoyance as well as everyone else having to deal with the two arguing loudly. Alright everyone, I know that all of you are excited but please be quiet so I can tell you who are your teammates and new sensei, said Iruka to which everyone did. Okay team 1 will be, Iruka said as he read out the list that the Hokage gave him. Okay I'm going to skip all the other teams and do the ones that we all know. Team 7 is Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno and. Before Iruka could say who their third member was he was interrupted by Sakura. Yes true love wins, in your face Eno pig. Sakura shouted happily while jumping in the air out of her chair. Sakura I haven't finished yet so sit back down, Aruka shouted annoyed. Sorry Aruka sensei, Sakura said as she did what Aruka said. And as for your third team member it is Naruto Namikaze and your sensei will be Kakashi Hitaki, said Aruka. Kakashi Hitaki, he was one of his student, Naruto thought curiously. Yes I'm going to be with Sasuke and he will see that we were made for each other but why do we have to have Naruto with us, thought Sakura as she would have loved if it was just her and Sasuke. Great I'm stuck with the loudest of my fangirls but at least I got Naruto a team member who can handle themselves and hopefully this new sensei Kakashi Hitaki is a strong shinobi and knows many powerful jutsu, thought Sasuke. Iruka sensei wasn't Naruto named the rookie of the year while Sasuke is the second best in our class and Sakura is one of the top kunoichi so shouldn't the person who is the dead last be on their team instead of Sasuke as that's what usually happens? Shikamaru asked curiously. Well the third Hokage wanted to try something different this year, Iruka said, saying what the third Hokage had told him. It's mostly because Kakashi possesses the Sharingan making him the only person who can train Sasuke how to use it once he awakens it, thought Naruto. Anyways team 8 will be Kiba Inazuka, Shino Abarame, Hanada Hayuga and your sensei is Kurenai Yuhi, said Iruka. Hmm the higher ups probably pick our team to be a tracker team, it is a smart idea, thought Shino. Yes I'm going to the alpha on this team and Hanada is pretty cute and hopefully our new sensei is hot, Kiba thought pervertedly. I was hoping to team up with Naruto, Hanada thought sadly. And lastly Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akamichi and your sensei is Asuma Serutobi however team 9 is still active so you will be team 10, said Iruka. Why do I have to be stuck with the lazy bum in the fat ass? Ino shouted angrily. Hey I'm not fat. I'm just big bone. Choji shouted angrily before going back to eat his big bag of crisps. Ino all are decided by the Hokage in the council so if you have a problem speak with them, said Iruka. It's just so unfair. Why does Billboard Brow get to be with Sasuke while I'm stuck with these two, thought Ino. They probably only team us up together because they want to recreate our father's team, the Ino Shikacho, what a drag, thought Shikamaru. It's a shame that Naruto, Shikamaru and I can't be a team together, thought Choji. Now all of you wait here for your new sensei to pick you up, said Iruka. 
Two hours later the only people who were still waiting for their sensei was Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura while everyone else's sensei had came and pick up their genin team Sakura was trying to start a conversation with Sasuke and and was failing at it as Sasuke just ignore her while Naruto was reading a book until he decided to go and get a drink and as Naruto got up and walked to the door he stopped when he heard Sakura call his name. Naruto. Where are you going? We are supposed to wait here for our new sensei to show up, said Sakura. Calm down. I'm just going to get myself something to drink, Naruto said before leaving the classroom. How rude. He could have at least offered to get us one, Sakura thought as she could actually use a drink herself. After 20 minutes of Sakura continued to fail to try and start a conversation with Sasuke to which annoyed him greatly and just then someone new walked in the classroom. Hi there. I'm Kakashi Hataki and I'm your new sensei, Kakashi said, not looking up from his orange book. Um Kakashi sensei Naruto's isn't here, Sakura said which made Kakashi look up and saw that Naruto wasn't there. Oh where is he then? Kakashi asked curiously. He said he's going to get a drink but that was 20 minutes ago, said Sakura. Then I guess I'm going to have to go and look for him, Kakashi said as he turned around back to the door but to his surprise Naruto was standing there with a can of soda. How did he get behind me undetected? Kakashi thought as while he did have his guard down it was still surprising that a mere genin managed to get behind him without him noticing Naruto at all. About time you show up, Naruto said before taking a sip from his drink. Okay then you three meet me on the roof, Kakashi said before disappearing leaving a couple of leaves. Guess I will see you two up there, Naruto said before he performed the same thing that Kakashi just did which surprised both Sasuke and Sakura. On the rooftop as Kakashi appeared he went and sat on the wall reading his book believing that he got some time to spend but suddenly in a proof of smoke Naruto appeared and ignored Kakashi and sat down to finish his drink. So Kosuke has taught him the body flicker technique, as well, Kakashi thought curiously. After seven minutes Sasuke and Sakura finally managed to get to the roof. Okay now that everyone is here, why don't we tell everyone what our likes, dislikes, hobbies and dreams are? said Kakashi. Kakashi sensei, why don't you go first so we know what to do? said Sakura. I'm sure well my name is Kakashi Hataki my likes and dislikes are well I can't say, my hobbies are well you three are too young to know and my dream is well I don't feel like telling you, said Kakashi. All he told us was his name and we already knew that Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura thought at the same time. Okay how about you go first Pinky, Kakashi said pointing at Sakura. Don't call me Pinky. Sakura shouted angrily. Well anyway my name is Sakura Haruno and my likes are. Quick glance Sasuke. My dislikes are Eno Pig and. Quick angrily glance at Naruto. My hobbies are. Another quick glance at Sasuke. And my dream is. And another quick glance at Sasuke. What a total fangirl, Kakashi, Naruto and Sasuke thought at the same time. Okay how about you Mr. Moody, Kakashi said pointing at Sasuke. My name is Sasuke Uchiha and I don't like many things and I hate a lot of things, my hobbies are training and learning new jutsus and I don't have a dream because I'm going to make it into reality I'm going to kill a certain person and not just restore my clan but it's stronger than ever, said Sasuke. Sasuke is so cool. Sakura thought dreamy. Yep he's everything what his profile says he is, thought Kakashi. As long as he stays away from me and doesn't try to use me for his own goals everything will be fine between us, thought Naruto. And finally the blondie, Kakashi said pointing at Naruto, which he couldn't help but see how much Naruto looked almost exactly like Minato just with a different eye color. My name is Naruto Namikaze, my likes are reading, fishing, gardening and hanging out with my friends, my dislikes are stupid and annoying people, quick glance over at Sakura, my hobbies are training and learning new things and as for my dream well I guess is to be able to travel and see many different places, said Naruto. Well at least he seems the most normal one although a part of me was expecting for his dream to be the next Hokage like both of his parents' dreams were, Kakashi thought. Well anyways you three ain't genin just yet, said Kakashi. What? But Kakashi sensei, will we pass the genin exam? Sakura asks in shock. Well that test was just to see if you were ready for the true exam, Kakashi said as he stood up. Met me tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock in the training ground 7, Kakashi said as turn around to leave. Oh and before I forget here's advice for tomorrow's test don't eat anything or you'll punk it up, Kakashi said before leaving a couple of leaves behind. 
At Konoha Training Ground 7 at 12 o'clock o'clock Sasuke and Sakura have been waiting for their sensei for the past two hours to show up and they were both annoyed and hungry as they hadn't eaten anything yet however Naruto had ignored Kakashi's warning and instead he had eaten a full breakfast as he had a feeling at the back of his head telling him that was just a trick and he had only gotten to the training ground five minutes ago as he also had a feeling that Kakashi was going to be late again. Suddenly Kakashi appeared wavering at his three students and not even being bothered by the angrily looks he was getting from two of them. Good morning you three, Kakashi said casually. Where have you been? We had waited for you for over two hours, Sakura shouted very loudly and angrily. Well you see I am making my way here but a black cat crossed my path so I had to go the long way around, Kakashi said simply. Don't you dare give us that lame excuses, Sakura shouted angrily. I am definitely going to need a pair of earplugs if I'm going to be on the same team as her, Naruto thought, annoyed with Sakura's consent need to shout. Kakashi then walks over to a rock and places a clock on it and walks over to Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura and then he pulls out two bells from his pocket. Anyways you three have one hour to get these bells from me or all of you will be sent back to the academy, Kakashi said causing Sasuke and Sakura to tense up while Naruto didn't seem bothered by it at all. But Kakashi sensei there are only two bells, said Sakura. Wow I'm actually impressive Sakura, I didn't know you could count higher than one, Naruto said in a mocking tone. Shut up Naruto, Sakura shouted angrily. Make me Haruno, Naruto said again in a mocking tone as he knew Sakura isn't be able to do anything against him as she barely does any physical training to become stronger as instead she's too focused on her looks to try and impress Sasuke instead of trying to impress him by showing him that she was a badass Kunoichi. Yeah if you haven't figured it out yet Naruto doesn't have a crush on Sakura and he won't be putting up with her treating him like crap like in canon. Now now you two there's no need for fighting, anyway it means that one of you will be sent back to the academy, Kakashi said causing the three to tense up. Being. Kakashi shouted and in that moment Sasuke and Sakura jumped into the brushes while Naruto used body flicker technique to disappear. In the forest Sakura wasn't hiding or even planning to get the bells from Kakashi. Instead she was walking around the forest shouting very loudly for Sasuke. Sasuke. Where are you Sasuke? Sakura shouted looking for her, true love. Suddenly she heard something behind her and as she turned around to see what it was but what she saw both shocked and horrified her, there stood leaning on a tree was Sasuke who was bleeding badly. S saw Sakura P please H help M me, Sasuke begged. S Sasuke. Sakura said while she was on the edge of crying. P please H help me Sakura, Sasuke said before falling to the ground dead. A A A A A A R R R R R R R R. Sakura screamed in terror before she passed out on the ground. As she did, the Sasuke in front of her faded away and up in the tree sitting on a branch was Kakashi. Maybe I overdid it a bit but she should have seen through the demonic illusion. Hell viewing technique, as her report did say that she's one of the most gifted kunoichis of this year's graduation class, Kakashi thought before leaving. Back on the training ground as Kakashi walked out of the forest he quickly took out a kanai and blocked the incoming shuriken that were heading for his head. He has some good aim there, Kakashi thought as he watched Sasuke walk out from behind a tree. So you decided that you'll be the first to try and get the bells from me Sasuke? Kakashi asked. Don't underestimate me I'm not like the other two, I'm far better than them, Sasuke said as he went into his clan's fighting stance known as the interceptor style. That is yet to be seen, said Kakashi, Sasuke change. At Kakashi at a chunin level of speed which surprise. Him and he then continued to block and dodge Sasuke's attacks which impressive Kakashi by how far skill Sasuke was in taijutsu because he was managing to push him back bit however Sasuke jump away and threw several shuriken and kanai at Kakashi who managed to dodge all of him with ease however he did fell for a trap that Sasuke laid out for him where several move kanai and shuriken were fired at him when Sasuke pick up one the kunais that thrown and use it to cut a rope line. As Kakashi dodge all of Sasuke's kanai and shuriken Sasuke quickly ran at Kakashi and once again engaged Kakashi in taijutsu but as Kakashi managed to dodge and block Sasuke's attacks he quickly realized that Sasuke wasn't truly trying to fight him but instead distract Kakashi as he got closer to grab one of the bells from Kakashi. Upon realizing what Sasuke was trying to do Kakashi managed to jump away in the nick of time but Sasuke managed to slightly touch one of the bells. Okay now that was pretty close this kid isn't all talk he's actually as good, I got to be careful with him around or else, thought Kakashi. 
As Kakashi jumped away Sasuke thought that he needed to up his game if he wanted to pass the exam so he began to do hand signs. Fire style. Fireball jutsu, Sasuke said as he let out a middle-sized fireball through his mouth. As the fireball headed towards Kakashi who just stood there out of shock. How can a mere genin be capable of doing a C-rank fire ninjutsu technique? Kakashi thought as the fireball engulfed him. Sasuke saw that this was he changed so he quickly ran over to Kakashi to grab one of the bells but to his surprise he couldn't find Kakashi anyway. Where the hell is he right, left, behind me or above? Sasuke thought as he tried to figure out where Kakashi was but suddenly something grabbed onto Sasuke's ankles and as he looked down to see what it was he saw Kakashi's head sticking out of the ground. Looking for me, Kakashi said as he pulled Sasuke underground leaving only his head by using the earth style double suicide decapitation jutsu, after which Kakashi came out of the ground and crouched down onto his knees in front of Sasuke. Well Sasuke I got to admit you are indeed talented as I didn't expect to be pushed this far, Kakashi said then he got up and walked away. You can't leave me like this, Sasuke shouted angrily however just then Sakura, who had regained consciousness, walked out from the forest but only to see Sasuke's head sticking out from the ground. Air. Sakura screamed in terror. Sign. Sakura I'm not dead just that the rest of my body is buried underneath, said Sasuke. Sasuke don't worry I will get you out of this, Sakura said as she ran over to help Sasuke out from the ground. Suddenly Naruto appeared and he began to walk towards Kakashi. Ah there you are, Naruto, I was wondering when you were going to do something, said Kakashi. Naruto. Come help me get Sasuke out of this, Sakura demanded. However Naruto just ignored her and continued to walk over to Kakashi with a serious look on his face which reminded Kakashi whenever Minato got serious when he was in a fight back during the third great ninja war. So you want to take a chance and try to get the bells by yourself, then let's see if you have better luck than Sasuke did, said Kakashi. Well I want to pass your test but I also want fight against someone who is actually strong. Naruto said he just went into his fighting stance which made Kakashi curious as he recognized the stance which was the strong fist fighting stance but he was curious on how Naruto knew it as it wasn't taught at the Konoha Academy and Kosuke didn't know it so how does Naruto? Naruto in a burst speed charged straight at Kakashi at a high level shinobi which caught Kakashi by surprise while to Sasuke and Sakura. Naruto just disappear and reappear in front of Kakashi. As Naruto attacked Kakashi with his taijutsu to which he actually managed to land his blows on Kakashi who could only block and dodge them at the best of his ability and Naruto then flip upside down in the air and start to kick Kakashi to distract him while he used his hands to grab one of the bells of Kakashi's belt however Kakashi saw that Naruto was trying to do the same thing that Sasuke had tried before so he kicked at Naruto in his chest to get him away. He's a lot faster and stronger than the avenged genin, Kakashi thought. As Naruto managed to land his feet back on the ground he then did a couple hand hand signs and said, Shadow Clone Jutsu, where in a proof of smoke ten more Naruto's appear who all then change at Kakashi while the real Naruto disappears into the forest. Now then where did the real one run off to? Kakashi thought as he had managed to land a single blow on each of the clones causing them to disperse before making his way into the forest to find the real Naruto. However as Kakashi walked in the forest suddenly he sensed something was coming and just then a big gust of wind came out and smacked Kakashi which sent him flying into a couple of trees and as Kakashi lay down by the fallen trees he had one thought going through his head. That was a wind style jutsu but how does Naruto possess his wind chakra nature? Since he has wood style which means that he possesses both water and earth chakra natures and with him being the Jinchuriki for the Kyubi means that he also has energy style and has both fire and lightning chakra natures. Does Naruto somehow also possess all five chakra natures? Kakashi thought as he picked himself up but then he was kicked in the back by Naruto. Okay I see that you definitely ain't playing around, Kakashi said as he picked himself up again while also looking at Naruto. This is a battle so why would I? Naruto said in a serious tone as he released his Tonto blade from its seal which was on his red wristband on his right arm. So he knows a bit of fuinjutsu, Kakashi thought as he brought out from his back pocket two kunais and held one in each of his hands to block Naruto's attacks. 
Naruto then changed at Kakashi at same level of speed as before and as he got to Kakashi he did a upper slice at him to which cut part of Kakashi's Konoha's flak jacket but he managed to block with his kunai's by doing a X shape however Naruto was able to break free and swing his Tonto blade around and cut Kakashi's left arm causing it to bleed and he follow it up with a kick to Kakashi's side which push him backwards. Okay I'm actually having a bit of trouble here, thought Kakashi. Naruto continued his assault on Kakazi who could only avoid them and then block until Naruto had enough and started to channel chakra though his Tonto blade causing it to glow brightly and with one upper swing Naruto managed to shatter both Kakashi's kanai into pieces. That was chakra flow okay Kosuke has done a good job at training him. Kakashi thought as he avoided Naruto's next attacks by jumping away from him however he saw Naruto wasn't coming at him which confused Kakashi. Leaf Ninja Art Yanagi technique, Naruto said before he began to wave his Tonto blade back and forth, which caused Kakashi to hallucinate and with his guard down, Naruto began freely cut Kakashi where to Kakashi he saw multiple waving arms out to slash them however eventually Kakashi managed to break free from the genjutsu and once he did he immediately jump away from Naruto. That was a genjutsu, the leaf ninja art. Yanagi technique, so Kosuke managed to teach him that as well. I wasn't expecting him to be able to use Genjutsu with him being Jinchuriki, Kakashi thought. The only reason why that work on Kakashi was because he didn't expect Naruto to be able to use Genjutsu, if he had known Naruto was capable of using Genjutsu then he wouldn't have fallen for it. That's a interesting technique you got there Naruto, Kakashi said as he saw Naruto create two more shadow clones who once were created began doing hand signs. Wind style. Gale Palm Jutsu. Both Naruto's clones said as they formed a powerful gust of wind from their hands while the real Naruto jumped up a bit just in time as they slammed their hands on the bottom of Naruto's feet. Naruto stream, Naruto said before he was propelled straight at Kakashi at higher speeds surprising him but thanks to Kakashi's great skill and years of experience as a shinobi he dodged the incoming Naruto by bending backwards however as he was face to face with Naruto he saw that Naruto wasn't annoyed by Kakashi managing to dodge his attack instead he just smiled at Kakashi before he turned into smoke revealing that he was also a shadow clone. Just then a hand burst out of the ground revealing Naruto who had secretly used earth style double suicide decapitation jutsu, to hit underground just like Kakashi had done with Sasuke before however unlike with Naruto didn't try to instead he reach out and grab the bells but he could Kakashi spin around just in time and jump away unaware of something that Naruto did when he had burst out of the ground. He must have switched places with a shadow clone when I was under his genjutsu, Kakashi thought as he landed in the middle of the training ground he saw that Sakura had finally finished digging Sasuke out from the ground but just then Naruto walk out of the forest who was already performing some hand signs. Lighting style. Thunderclap arrow jutsu. Naruto said as he threw a bolt of lightning at Kakashi who couldn't escape in time because of how fast it was and so he was completely hit by it. Sasuke and Sakura stare at Naruto's attack in awe and shock. What was that jutsu? Sakura thought curiously. What kind of jutsu was that? Where did he learn it from? Sasuke thought curiously. However as the smoke cleared it revealed Kakashi wasn't there and for a second Sasuke and Sakura thought that Naruto had completely destroyed Kakashi but just Kakashi appeared behind Naruto in a crouch position and his hands formed a tiger seal. Second rule of being a shinobi, Naruto is to never let your enemy get behind you, said Kakashi. Konohagakur's most secret and sacred technique, 1000 years of death, Kakashi said as he inserted his index and middle fingers at Naruto's rectum. But as he did the Naruto in front of him exploded causing a massive explosion fortunately though for Kakazi he managed to evade the explosion just in time. That was the clone great explosion technique, just how many techniques has Kosuke taught him? Thought Kakashi. The real Naruto quickly ran out of the forest and threw a couple of kanai and shuriken at Kakashi who managed to dodge them however before Naruto continued his attack on Kakashi the alarm clock rang meaning that the test was over. Afterwards Naruto and Sasuke stood next to wooden poles while Sakura was tied to one with Kakashi standing in front of them. Okay seeing that none of you managed to get the bells, let's talk about what went wrong, said Kakashi. Sakura. You were too occupied trying to find Sasuke to even do anything to pass the test and you failed to notice that you got caught by my genjutsu, said Kakashi. Sasuke while you did try to get the bells off me and you did a good job in trying however you didn't think about working with the others believing that they would have held you back, said Kakashi. 
Naruto you were the same as Sasuke while you did a good job trying but you didn't try to work with either Sasuke or Sakura, said Kakashi. However I got to pass them or the civilian council will be piss off if I don't pass Sasuke as they want me to train him in everything that I know and since I'm the only person within Konoha who can train him on how to use his Sharingan once he awakens it, as for Naruto the Hokage wants me to try and change his opinion on Minato Sensei and I have to do it for Minato Sensei, thought Kakashi. Actually Kakashi Sensei, I did manage to get both bells from you, Naruto said, holding them in his hands. Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakura just stare at Naruto in shock. No way he actually managed to get them while Sasuke couldn't, thought Sakura. How did he get them and when I couldn't, thought Sasuke. When did he get them off me? thought Kakashi. Um Naruto when did you manage to get them? Kakashi asked curiously. I took them off you when you jumped away from me when I burst out of the ground, said Naruto. But I was sure that I managed to get away in time, Kakashi thought unaware that Naruto had used the chakra mold ability of the Uzumaki clan that he had inherited from his mother to create a string from his index finger to grab them during his attack. Then why didn't you say that you got them off me? Kakashi asked curiously. Because I wanted to see how I fare against you, said Naruto. Okay well done Naruto however as for Sasuke and Sakura you two will also pass the test because I believe despite your problems you two have potential to become great shinobi in the future, Kakashi said making up an excuse as to why they truly pass. It is most likely he doesn't want to get in trouble with the civilian council for failing Sasuke, thought Naruto. So now we are team 7, said Kakashi. Yes I'm going to be with Sasuke no matter what, Sakura thought happily. He seems pretty good, maybe he can help me get stronger, thought Sasuke. Okay, let's meet at the Hokage's mansion tomorrow morning for our first mission as a team, said Kakashi. As Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura left Kakashi alone where he had one thought going through his head. So Naruto is skilled enough where he doesn't need to use either his wood style or blaze style, I should probably go and tell the third Hokage that they passed my test, Kakashi thought as he walked towards the Hokage's office. Deep within the forest that surrounds Konoha there was something running as fast as it could to get far away from Konoha and if anyone could see into its eyes they would be able to see it had hope of escaping. I'm almost there and soon I'll never have to deal with that thing. Ever again, the creature thought hopefully. I think it went this way, someone very loudly shouted. Damn it I that thought I lost them, the creature thought. But just then someone with violet eyes appeared right in front of the creature causing it to stop and stare at the person in fear as the creature's instincts told it to not mess with this person and before the creature could do anything the person reached out and grabbed hold of the creature. Damn it. The creature thought. Kakashi sensei, I have the cat, said the person. Back to normal, good work Naruto, I think that's a new record for the fastest person to ever be able to catch Tora, Kakashi said over the headset. But Kakashi sensei. Sasuke and I did all the work while all Naruto did was nothing until now so shouldn't he get in trouble for not helping us sooner, Sakura complained. Well actually Sakura I thought that you and Sasuke needed to improve your stamina and I saw this as an opportunity to help you, Naruto said completely lying as in truth he found it funny seeing how Sasuke and Sakura were failing at trying to catch a cat. Shut up Naruto or else. Sakura shouted angrily. Or else what? Your threats don't scare me Sakura, Naruto said firmly. Now now you two just calm down, Naruto you'll be the one to bring Tora back to the village but be careful as she might try to escape again, said Kakashi. Sure thing Kakashi sensei, said Naruto. Although it does kind of make me wonder why it constantly runs away a lot. Naruto thought curiously as he walked back to Konoha with Tora who had a look of dread on its face. At the Hokage's office, well that explains it, Naruto thought as he looked at the scene in front of him as right in front of Team 7 was Madame Shijimi, the wife of Daimyo of the Land of Fire and she was currently hugging, strangling her cat Tora. I kind of feel like I shouldn't have brought it back, Naruto thought, actually feeling sorry for the poor cat. Great job Team 7 now as for your next mission you can choose from helping with the client's grocery, paint another client fence or babysit, said Iruka. No Tora. Come back, shouted Madame Shijimi. Or now bring Tora back to Madame Shijimi, said Iruka. No way. Sasuke deserves a far better mission than any of these pointless ones. Sakura shouted angrily which Sasuke agreed with but he chose to say nothing. These missions ain't pointless Sakura as they are to help you to improve your teamwork for future missions that are higher in rank, Iruka explained. 
he says that but they are basically things people can't be asked to do, so they make us do them instead and just call them missions, thought Naruto. I need a harder mission so that I can become even stronger, Sasuke said firmly. You are not ready for them. As you three are just fresh genin that need more teamwork expectations, Aruka said seriously. Aruka if they believe themselves to be ready for a higher rank mission then why don't we give them a C rank? Only if you think they are truly ready Kakashi. Ask Hiruzen. Yeah sure. Kakashi said as he continued to read his orange book which he has been reading constantly since Team 7 was formed. Okay then, please bring in the client. Hiruzen told the Jonin to his right who bowed his head at the third Hokage before leaving the room and after a couple of minutes an old man walked in the room. These are the shinobis that I hire. They look like they belong in school, the old man complained. Mr. Tazuna, please do not underestimate these genin because of their age, said Hiruzen. I'm just saying that I wanted real shinobi, not childer. Before Tazuna could finish his sentence he felt something sharp against his throat and as he looked down he saw Naruto who was holding his tanto blade against his throat. Listen to our Hokage and don't underestimate me got it? Naruto said in a serious tone which scared Tazuna. While this was happening everyone else in the room all thought about what just happened. How did he get there so fast? Sakura thought curiously. How was he able to move like that? Sasuke thought curiously and a bit jealous. At least I know that this mission isn't going to be that difficult since it's a C rank and having Naruto will just make it that more easier, thought Kakashi. So Kakashi didn't overestimate Naruto's speed, thought Hiruzen. I still find it hard to believe that a new genin has that kind of power, thought Iruka. What the hell? Tizuna thought terrified. Now Naruto, it's very bad for business to threaten the client, said Hiruzen. Yes Lord Hokage, Naruto said as he walked back to his mean while he placed his tanto blade back into the seal. As you can see, Tazuna do not underestimate my shinobi even if they are genin, said Hiruzen. Why yeah sure, Tazuna said who was still a bit scared. Okay team, let's at the west gate in two hours bring only things that you need, said Kakashi. Four hours at Konoha's West Gate Sasuke and Sakura were currently waiting for Kakashi and Naruto to finally show up for their mission and they have been waiting for over two hours. Where the hell are those two? Sakura shouted angrily. Why do I always get stuck alone with her? Sasuke thought annoyed. But just then Kakashi finally appeared with Tazuna however Kakashi was now carrying a holster worn diagonally over his right shoulder which held a tanto blade. It's just like what his father Sakumo Hitaki. Yo, Kakashi said with a wave. Where the hell have you been? Sakura shouted angrily. Well you see I got lost on the path of life, Kakashi said with his usual lame excuses. Lies. Sakura shouted angrily. Kakashi then noticed that Sasuke now had a brown leather harness which ran across his chest and fastened over both his shoulders with a tanto blade strapped to the right side of the back of his shoulder. It's just like what Shisui had. I didn't know you knew how to use a tanto blade as well Sasuke, said Kakashi. I had decided to learn how to use it to get my revenge as this tanto blade once belonged to my cousin Shisui Uchiha and I figured that if I was going to learn how to use a tanto blade then I'll use his one in Shisui's honor, said Sasuke. And maybe I can learn that genjutsu technique that uses a tanto blade to perform, the one that Naruto had used against Kakashi sensei, Sasuke thought curiously. Anyway. Where's Naruto? Kakashi asked curiously. He hasn't shown up yet, Sasuke said as once again he was jealous of Naruto for not having to stand around waiting for over two hours. However, just as Sasuke said that Naruto appeared right in front of everyone. Is it time to leave? Naruto asked simply. Yeah two hours ago. Where the hell have you been? Sakura shouted angrily. Around and besides, haven't you two realized that Kakashi sensei is always late by two hours for missions, said Naruto. I thought he only does that for low rank missions, both Sasuke and Sakura thought. You know how to use a tanto blade as well Kakashi sensei? Naruto asked however at the back of his head he couldn't help but feel that Kakashi carrying a blade like that feels familiar. Yes I do Naruto, as this here has been passed down within my family and I used it back during the third great ninja war however it was destroyed by an enemy shinobi but after the war I had it repaired it and I only use it for missions which was why I didn't have with me during the bell test, anyway, is everyone ready because it's going to take us a couple of days to reach the land of waves? said Kakashi. Wait. Sakura shouted. Yes, 
What it is Sakura? Kakashi asked. Kakashi sensei Naruto doesn't have anything with him for the mission. Sakura said, pointing at Naruto, who, unlike them, wasn't carrying any bags. What's the point of carrying a bunch of things while I can just seal them into a scroll? Naruto said he pulled out a scroll. Then seal both my and Sasuke's bags in there as well, Sakura demanded. No, Naruto said simply. Why not? Sakura shouted angrily. Because it isn't my fault that you two don't know how to seal things yourself, said Naruto. Kakashi sensei makes Naruto seal our things as well, Sakura demanded. I will not Sakura since Naruto does have a point as storage scrolls are useful in our line of work so you two really should learn how to do it yourselves as well but until then you will have to carry your things the old fashioned way, said Kakashi. After that all of team 7 and Tazuna left the village and made their way to the land of waves and as they walked, Sakura decided that it was a perfect time to ask Tazuna a couple of questions about his homeland. So Tazuna, why didn't you hire any shinobi from the land of waves? Sakura asked curiously. Sakura not every nation has a shinobi village, said Kakashi. How come Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked curiously. Many nations can't afford the funding for a shinobi village as it is costly, said Kakashi. Oh I see, said Sakura. However in the land of iron instead of having shinobi they have samurais, said Kakashi. Samurais? Sasuke asked curiously. They are masters of kenjutsu and they live in the land of iron, said Kakashi. Interesting, Sasuke thought about all of the kenjutsu he could learn to help him in his vengeance. Because of how expensive shinobi villages are, only a couple nations have them, however unlike ours they don't have a cage, said Kakashi. But isn't a cage the leader of your shinobi villages? How can they not have one? Tazuna asked curiously. Those villages do have leaders but they are not called cage, said Kakashi. Why not? Tazuna asked curiously. Because the title of cage is only given to a village that is one of the five great shinobi countries, said Kakashi. The five great shinobi nations? Tazuna asked curiously. The five great shinobi nations are the strongest shinobi villages in the world and Konoha is one of them, said Kakashi. Who are the other four great shinobi nations? Tazuna asked curiously. In the land of wind there is the village hidden in the sand known as Sanagakure and their cage is called the Kase Cage. In the land of earth there is the village hidden in the stone known as Iwagakure and their cage is called the Suchikage, in the land of lightning there is the village hidden in the cloud known as Kumogakure and their cage is called the Rakage and finally in the land of water there is the village hidden in the mist known as Kirigakure and their cage is called the Mizukage, Kakashi explained. However, many years ago there was going to be a sixth great shinobi nation, said Naruto. So he knows about his ancestral homeland, thought Kakashi. Oh what was it? Tazuna asked curiously. In the land of whirlpools there was the village hidden in the whirling tides known as Uzushio, said Naruto. I've never heard of it. What clans live there? Sasuke asks curiously, thinking about the jutsus that he could learn from there. Just one who was known as the Uzumaki clan, Naruto said, surprising Sasuke, Sakura and Tazuna. A village was made up entirely of one clan and they were going to be known as the sixth great shinobi nation. How is that possible? Sakura asked curiously. Because the Uzumaki clan were renowned throughout the entire shinobi world for their great fuinjutsu skills, they even had a connection with Konoha, Naruto said, surprising Sasuke, Sakura and Tazuna. It's true as the symbol that we have on the back of our flak jacket is that clan symbol as we wear it out of respect for alliance with Uzushio who were our first allies and both the first Hokage and the fourth Hokage wives were members from that clan, Kakashi explained. They are even related to the Senju clan as back during the warring era both clans were once one clan and they used to be one known as the Senmaki clan, said Naruto. They were a part of the clan that fought against my back during the warring era. Sasuke thought curious about how strong they were. Then what happened to them? Tazuna asked curiously. Back during the second great ninja war they were attacked by the combined might of three minor shinobi villages who were Hoshi. Kusa and Taki because they were all jealous of Uzushio as it was being called the sixth great shinobi nations and so they did a surprise attack on Uzushio where they somehow were able to bypass the barrier jutsu that the Uzumaki clan place all around Uzushio and those who survived the village's destruction scattered across the globe seeking refuge. Naruto explained with anger in his voice which Sasuke and Sakura both notice however they choose to keep quiet. 
As they continued their way they saw a puddle in the middle of the road which was strange because it hasn't rained for a couple days and as they passed it only Naruto and Kakashi knew the truth while Tazuna and Sakura didn't have a quote. Suddenly metal chains appeared wrapped around Kakashi and then two men appeared with large clawed gauntlets which had one end of the chains around Kakashi attached to it one had the gauntlet of his right hand while the other had it on his left hand. Both of them had shoulder length wild dark brown hair and dark eyes, he wore a rebreather that covered the lower half of his face like Kakashi with his mask, a camouflage suit with bandages around his waist, dark colored knee length sandals and a ragged black cape and around his forehead he had the Kirigakir headband however one had a single horn on it whilst the other had two horns on his. Then both men pulled on the chains which tore Kakashi into pieces. Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Sakura thought confidently. Okay Tazuna we will continue the mission, said Kakashi. Thank you so much, Tazuna said, tears going down his face. As they continued their way to Land of Waves they had to stop and had to hire a rowboat to get there and as they got closer they saw something huge within the mist. What's that? Sakura asks. Well that is, said Tazuna. As they got closer they were able to see what it was though the mist and it revealed to be a massive unfinished bridge. My bridge, said Tazuna. Wow, it's huge, said Sakura. Well yeah it has to be, said Tazuna. Because of how many people will be using it, said Naruto. Yes exactly, said Tazuna. The rower then informs them that he couldn't take them all the way because Gato's men may spot them and as they finally reach land Naruto sensed something in a brush so he threw a kanai at it but then a pure white rabbit ran out from the brush scared. Naruto. You massive idiot you almost hurt that poor bunny rabbit, Sakura shouted angrily. No, there was something there a moment again I know it, thought Naruto. Wait. That rabbit's fur is white that doesn't belong in this land, thought Kakashi. Suddenly Kakashi sensed something was heading straight for them. Everyone. Get down. Kakashi ordered. As they all duck it was in time as a large blade flew past them and embedded itself into a tree and then a man appeared standing on it. That sword it's, the executioner blade, it's one of the legendary seven swords of the hidden mist, so it's Yuzabuza Momochi, the demon of the mist, said Kakashi. I'm flattered that Kakashi Hataki, the copycat ninja, knows who I am, said Zabuza. So Gato has even hired you? Kakashi asked. Yeah so why don't you choose the easy way out and just hand over the bridge builder, said Zabuza. You know I can't do that Zabuza, said Kakashi, well in that case, Zabuza said before he then ripped his large blade out from the tree and jumped onto the lake and was standing on it. So it's the hard way then, said Zabuza. You three stay back and guard Tazuna. I'll handle Zabuza. Kakashi ordered which his three genin nodded before they formed around Tazuna with Sakura who had a kanai in her hands while both Naruto and Sasuke had drawn out their tanto blades. But how will you handle me? If you can't see me Kakashi, Zabuza said as he began doing a couple of hand signs. Hidden mist jutsu. Zabuza said before a thick mist appeared which covered everything making it impossible to see anything and Zabuza disappeared within the mist. He's going to use the silent killing technique, it's his village's specialty, Kakashi thought however suddenly Zabuza appeared in the middle of Tazuna, Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura and was about to cut them in half with his executioner blade however as he was stopped by Naruto who blocked it with his Tonto blade. Oh that's impressive a mere genin managed to block my attack so well, Zabuza said before he disappeared in the mist again. I have no choice. I have to use it, Kakashi said as he then lifted up his headband to reveal his left eye which was red and had three black tomo in it. Ah there's your famous Sharingan eye, which you used to copy over a thousand jutsus earning the name, the copy ninja, Zabuza said within the mist. The Sharingan. Why does he possess a Sharingan eye? He isn't a member of my clan, Sasuke thought curiously. Although he was also surprised by how many jutsus Kakashi has copied which made him a bit happy despite the situation they were in as it meant that if they managed to either defeat Zabuza or get away from him then when Kakashi truly began training them he'll have many jutsus to teach him and since he has the Sharingan that also means when Sasuke finally awakens his Sharingan then Kakashi would be the perfect person to teach him how to use it effectively. The Sharingan but that's the legendary bloodline of your clan Sasuke, Sakura said knowing all about Sasuke's famous clan. The Sharingan, what is that? Tazuna asked curiously wondering what they were talking about as to him it just seems that Kakashi has an unusual left eye. It's a special ability among my clan the Uchiha which allows us to see their opponents movements and copy them as well as cast powerful genjutsu over them just by looking into their eyes, Sasuke explained with pride in his voice. Wow! Tazuna said in amazement. And since I'm going up against one of the seven swordsmen of the mist then I better use this as well, Kakashi said as he drawn out his tanto blade which was different from the usual tanto blade where it was a straight bladed tanto with a small, circular hand guard and the metal of the blade was most white. Oh that's a fancy blade you got there Kakashi, Zabuza said within the mist. This isn't your average tanto blade Zabuza, as like your sword the executioner's blade this blade is special as this here is my family's treasure item the white light chakra saber. The same Tonto blade that helped my father to earn his nickname, White Fang of the Leaf, Kakashi said as he prepared his blade. 
Then perhaps after I kill you I'll take it along with your Sharingan eye as it would definitely be useful for me to have, Zabuza said within the mist before suddenly everyone felt an overwhelming sense of killer instinct coming from within the mist. 8 points, Zabuza said within the mist. What the? Sakura asks, scared. Which should I choose? The liver, lungs, spine, heart, kidneys, throat, larynx, jugular vein and the last is the brain, said Zabuza. He's using his killer instinct to try and intimate us into making a mistake, thought Kakashi. I gotta stay focused, I won't allow him to I intimate him, Naruto thought and to Kakashi's and even Zabuza's amazement he actually managed to do it. Sakura was so scared of Zabuza's killer instinct causing her to not be able to even move an inch. Why am I shaking so much? Sasuke thought as he looked at his hand which was shaking. I got to make this fear go away. Sasuke thought as he lifted his Tonto blade closer to his throat but stopped when he heard Kakashi voice call out to him. Sasuke. Calm down. I promise you that I wouldn't allow any of you get hurt okay, Kakashi said hoping to calm Sasuke's nerves which it did. I wouldn't make promises that you can't keep Kakashi, Zabuza said as he appeared behind him and was ready to attack however Kakashi quickly brought a kanai and sliced through Zabuza's throat just in time but instead of blood there was water then Zabuza's whole body turned into a puddle of water. A, water clone, then that means. Kakashi thought as he turned his head just to see Zabuza who then cut Kakashi in half however just like Zabuza both halves of Kakashi turn into puddles of water. He made a, water clone, just like what I did, damn that copy cat shit. Zabuza thought angrily. This over Zabuza, Kakazi said as he held a minute's kanai against Zabuza's throat. I don't think so, Zabuza said as he then turned into another puddle of water. Another, water clone, thought Kakashi. Zabuza then appeared behind Kakashi and kicked him in the back however Kakazi managed to turn around and block it but the force from it sent him flying into the lake. As Kakashi tried to channel his chakra so he would be able to stand on top of the water he felt something wrong with the water like it was heavier than normal and that was when Kakashi realized why but it was too late because Zabuza was standing over him. Water prison jutsu, Zabuza said as he held his left hand out and the water around Kakashi formed into a ball trapping both Kakashi and Zabuza's left hand. Damn it I fell right into his trap, Kakashi thought angry at himself. Ha ha I can't believe you fell for it Kakashi, said Zabuza. Oh no he captured Kakashi sensei, Sakura said worry for her sensei. Just great, Sasuke said angrily, this is really bad, Tazuna said scare. However unlike everyone else's reaction Naruto's was different. So be it, Naruto said before he started to walk towards Zabuza and Kakashi. Oh so you think you can save your sensei do you, said Zabuza. Naruto. You got no chance against someone like him. Kakashi shouted concern for his student's life. Yeah you better listen to your sensei or else kid, said Zabuza. However, just kept walking towards them and when he reached the water Naruto then started to channel chakra though his feet like Zabuza is doing to allow him to walk on the water. He knows the water surface walking practice, so Kosuke taught Naruto that as well, thought Kakashi. I don't have time to waste on a mere genin like you. Zabuza said as he did a hand sign with his free hand. Water clone jutsu, Zabuza said and then suddenly the water in front of Zabuza rose up and formed into another Zabuza. Deal with him, the real Zabuza ordered. The water clone of Zabuza then drew out its own copy of the executioner blade and change at Naruto and everyone else was worried for the blonde hair leaf genin but Naruto held his tanto blade and began channeling his chakra through it but then the blue glow around it changed to white which meant Naruto had added wind nature air style. Wind slash, Naruto said before he swing his tanto blade in a quick motion that release a slash of wind at high speeds which easily cut off the water clone of Zabuza head and it made its way towards Zabuza who managed to block it with his executioner blade however it left crack on the blade surprising Zabuza as he knew how durable his sword was. W what the? Sakura said in shock. That was wind style but it was different, Sasuke thought curiously. How did he do that? Tazuna asked. That was definitely the air style technique of the Shimura clan he used just now, so Naruto knows how to use that style as well. Which is impressive as I remember how Minato sensei used it back when I was training under him, but how does Naruto know how to use it? Who taught it to him? 
Kakashi thought remembering how Mianto used back during the Third Great Ninja War as air style was far more sharper than normal wind style as Minato had used it to cut though many Iwa Shinobi earth style jutsus. Impressive kid, I didn't expect something like that, said Zabuza. Or this, Naruto said as he channeled his chakra through his left hand as it wasn't holding his tanto blade and lifted his hand up where he molded his chakra and a golden chain that was made out of Naruto's chakra shot out from his. What the hell is this? Zabuza said in shock. What is that? Sakura asked curiously. What are those things? Sasuke thought curiously. Those are the same chains that Lady Kashina had. So he inherited them from his mother. Kakashi thought in shock as he wasn't expecting for Naruto to have it since he already possesses wood style. Naruto chains headed straight for Zabuza's left wrist and as he saw them coming Zabuza knew that he didn't have a choice but to release his water prison jutsu, however as he did Naruto's chains did manage to cut Zabuza's left palm. Kakashi sensei, are you alright? Sakura shouted concern for her sensei. No, the water prison jutsu, which weakens the person who is captured by it, I'm going to need a minute, Kakashi explained. But will Naruto be able to hold out that long? Sakura asked concerned for her teammate. I hope so, said Kakashi. But after what happened with the bell test and now seeing this it just shows that Naruto has more up his sleeves and I have faith that he will be okay, thought Kakashi. Damn it. What the hell are those things? Zabuza thought annoyed seeing that Kakashi has escaped. The chakra chain then retreated back into Naruto's palm. Interesting trick you got there kid, said Zabuza. Naruto didn't say anything instead he just disappear in a burst of speed and then he reappear straight in front of Zabuza and began to attack Zabuza with his Tonto blade however Zabuza did manage to block them with his executioner blade thanks to all of his experienced swordsmanship. He's actually pretty good with Kenjutsu, Zabuza thought while actually being impressed. As Naruto and Zabuza battle in Kenjutsu, shocking both Sasuke and Sakura. However just then Zabuza kicked the water to splash Naruto making him back up for a second which allows Zabuza to begin his attacks on his but because of Naruto's speed Zabuza couldn't land any hits on Naruto until he managed to kick Naruto's Tonto blade out of his hands when Naruto tried to attack Zabuza from behind but Zabuza did a back kick which disarm him, however when he swing his executioner blade down upon Naruto who block it by using something else. Naruto had molded his chakra and had created an almost identical copy of the executioner blade where the only difference being was that it was a gold glowing malleable chakra. It's like a gold version of Kinshiki Atsusuki tool creation technique. What the hell? Zabuza thought in shock. What is that? Sasuke thought curiously as he narrowed his eyes at the weapon in Naruto's hands. What the? How does Naruto have a similar sword to that guy? Sakura said curiously. So he can also use his chakra mold to form other things besides chakra chains just like Kashina, Kakashi thought remembering back when he went on missions with his old team and Kashina was with them and she would use her chakra mold to form weapons and with her skill in Kenjutsu with them to defeat their enemies with ease. Damn it kid, another trick, said Zabuza. A true shinobi should always have more than just one trick, said Naruto. True enough, said Zabuza. Then Zabuza and Naruto. Both jump away from each other and Zabuza saw that. Naruto wasn't having any difficulty holding his version. Of the executioner blade at all which was strange because. For someone to be able to lift the executioner blade they would need to have a strong upper body strength and the reason why Naruto wasn't having difficulty was simple because the blade was made from his unique Uzumaki chakra meaning every weapon he can make from it will weigh nothing to him but to anybody else it will be like the real thing but suddenly two kunais came flying at Zabuza who managed to block them with ease then Kakashi appeared standing next to Naruto. Naruto, go back to the others, I'll handle this, Kakashi ordered. I can't do that Kakashi sensei, said Naruto. What? Why? asked Kakashi. Because you still haven't fully recovered yet and you might get recapture, said Naruto. Fine but just be careful, said Kakashi. I've had enough of this, Zabuza said before he began doing hand signs. Kakashi saw this with and began doing the exactly the same hand signs as Zabuza thanks to his Sharingan eye. Water style. Water Dragon Jutsu, Zabuza said as a dragon made out of water rose from the lake behind him. Water Style. Water Dragon Jutsu, Kakashi said as a dragon made out of water rose from the lake behind him. Then both water dragons change and clash against each other causing a large splash of water. 
He was able to copy and perform my jutsu the same as me, Zabuza thought annoyed. Shadow clone jutsu, Naruto said as another Naruto appeared next to him. A shadow clone. How the heck can a brat perform that advanced jutsu? Zabuza thought surprised. Zabuza then saw Naruto doing a couple of hand signs which he recognized. Water style. Wave surge. Naruto said a large surge of water from his mouth towards Zabuza who then saw the clone Naruto doing a couple of hand signs as well. Lightning style. Thunderclap arrow. The clone Naruto said as he created a bolt of lightning which he then threw at the original Naruto's jutsu combining with it and increasing its attack power greatly. What the hell? Is he really just a genin? Zabuza thought in shock. As Naruto's jutsu slammed into Zabuza which then sent him crashing into a tree however Zabuza was able to pick himself up even though he was badly hurt by Naruto but then a couple senban came flying out of nowhere and hit his neck dropping him. Then in a tree above Zabuza appeared a person wear a standard Kirigakure pinstripes outfit which stop at his knees with an green haori with white trimming over it and around his waist a brown slash as well as sandals with an anbu black ops mask with the symbol of the hidden mist village on it which hide his face completely. Thank you for dealing with Zabuza. I have been tracking him for a while now, the mask man said before he disappeared and then reappeared next to Zabuza. Kakashi sensei. Who is that? Sakura asked curiously. That Sakura is a hunter nin, said Kakashi. A hunter nin? Sakura asked curiously. They are specialists in tracking down rogue shinobi from their village, said Kakashi. But his voice sounds only a bit older than these three, thought Kakashi. I'll be taking my leave now, the hunter nin said before disappearing with Zabuza and his executioner blade. Okay let's continue on our mission, Kakashi said before he and everyone continued to make their way to Tazuna's home. Why isn't he weakened after using the Sharingan? I've read in the Uchiha clan library that if someone who isn't a member of our clan gets a Sharingan eye implanted into them it would put a lot of stress on their body, Sasuke thought curiously. As Team 7 and Tazuna finally reached Tazuna's village Amigakure they saw exactly how much Gato has ruined it as there were many homeless people, close shops and run-down homes and once they got to Tazuna's home they meet Tazuna's daughter Tsunami and they went the living room and once they sat down Sasuke decided to ask a question he's being waiting to ask Kakashi once they knew they weren't going to be attacked again. I got the name of Amigakure from the fantasy name generator's website and it had C next to it so I thought that it fits since it's in the land of waves. I have some questions to ask you, Kakashi sensei, said Sasuke. What is Sasuke? Kakashi asked while he already had a good idea on what they were going to be about. How exactly did you get that left eye of your Kakashi as it's my clan's bloodline, the Sharingan? Sasuke asked curiously. For my former teammate Obito Uchiha, said Kakashi. Obito Uchiha? That's my mother's younger brother's name, Sasuke said in shock. Yes Sasuke as I was a teammate and friend to your uncle, said Kakashi. I know that Obito wasn't Makoto Uchiha younger brother but I thought it would be interesting if it was. Then how did you get it from him then? Sasuke asked curiously. I wouldn't go into much detail about it but back during the third great ninja war, where my teammates and I were sent on a mission to Kanab Bridge where events happened there which caused me to lose my original left eye and got this scar but worse of all Obito die saving my life however not before asking our other teammate Rin Nohara transplant his left eye into me. Kakashi said sadly remembering one of the worst days of his life. But also how come you ain't suffering from any of the side effects from using the Sharingan then? Sasuke asked curiously. Side effects? Sakura asked curiously as she knew all about Sasuke's clan bloodline but she had never heard anything about side effects from using it. When someone who isn't from the Uchiha clan like Sasuke and gets the Sharingan implanted into them it puts a lot of stress on my body from using it, Kakashi explained. So how come you ain't affected by the side effects Kakashi sensei? Sasuke asks curiously thinking that Kakashi had somehow managed to find a loophole for the side effects. It is because of whom I'm a descendant of, said Kakashi. Who are you descendants of Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked curiously. I am the great grandson of the second Hokage Tobarama Senju, Kakashi said shocking Sasuke and Sakura while Naruto already knew is back in the Senju clan compound he had done some research trying to find out if he had family where he had found out about Tsunade Senju first and then about Kakashi being the descendant of Tobarama. No way. Then that means Kakashi sensei is technically a Senju, Sakura thought in shock. 
he's the descendant of the man who killed my great-great-grandfather. That the second Hokage also trained my grandfather Kagami Uchiha along with the third Hokage, his three advisors and Choji's grandfather Torifu Akamichi, thought Sasuke. Torifu Akamichi was a member of Team Tobarama where he was seen in a flashback however we don't know if he is Choji's grandfather or just another member of the Akamichi clan however in this story he's Choji's grandfather making him Choza Akamichi father and the 14th head of the Akamichi clan. Why is it being a descendant from the Senju clan that makes you immune to the side effects of the Sharingan? Sasuke asked curiously. Because the members of the Senju clan have far stronger bodies than most people and it is thanks to that I don't suffer from the side effects of using the Sharingan however I can't keep it on all the time as it does drain my chakra and I can't turn it off like the members of your clan Sasuke so that's why I have to keep it covered, Kakashi explained. I think we should talk about something more recently, said Naruto. Like what Naruto? Kakashi asked curiously. At the fact that Zabuza is still alive and will be coming here to finish the job, Naruto said, shocking everyone except for Kakashi. Don't make up lies like that Naruto, Sakura shouted angrily. Sakura, Naruto isn't lying, said Kakashi. What do you mean Kakashi-sensei? Sakura shouted in shock. Seriously, does she need to shout all of the time? Naruto thought annoyed. I mean exactly what Naruto just said, Zabuza is still alive, said Kakashi. How is that possible Kakashi-sensei? Sakura shouted worriedly while Sasuke didn't say anything but he still wanted to know. Because of what the hunter Nin used and what he didn't do, said Kakashi. What do you mean Kakashi-sensei? Sakura asked curiously. I mean as the tool he used was Senbon instead of Kanai or Shuriken which would be the obvious to take someone down and then he just took the body normally a hunter Nin would just dispose of the body and obviously take the executioner blade because it belongs to Kirigakure, said Kakashi. Don't you think you're overthinking about this, said Tazuna. Tazuna, it is our job to be prepared for anything, said Kakashi. So what do you think we should do then Kakashi-sensei? Naruto asked curiously. We should train for the worse, said Kakashi. Train? Both Sasuke and Sakura said at the same time. Yes, to get you two prepared for an upcoming battle, said Kakashi. Two but there are three of us, Kakashi-sensei, said Sakura. You and Sasuke need to get stronger if you will be able to help Naruto and I in the next fight against Zabuza and that fake hunter Nin, said Kakashi. What's that supposed to mean? Are you saying that I'm far weaker than him? Sasuke said angrily pointing at Naruto. Yes, because during the fight against Zabuza it was Naruto who kept him busy while I was recovering, said Kakashi. Yeah about that hey Naruto what were those techniques that you use? Sakura asked curiously while Sasuke was eager to know as well, hoping maybe he could learn them as well. That's none of your business, Naruto said firmly. What do you mean it's none of our business? We're your teammates ain't we? Sakura shouted angrily. Point at Sakura. You're just being nosy, point at Sasuke. He just wants to know if he could learn it, point at Kakashi. But Kakashi-sensei here already knows all about it, said Naruto. In that case Kakashi-sensei can you tell us about Naruto's weapon creating technique? Sakura asks, thinking that she found a loophole. However Kakashi looked at Naruto who was giving a glance which basically means, don't you even dare. Sorry I'm not at liberty to say anything, said Kakashi. Why not? Sakura whines. By the Hokage orders Kakashi said lying since he agrees with Naruto and it is up to him who he wants to tell. Kakashi then turns to look at Tizuna. Now then Tizuna do you know any place where I can train these two? Kakashi asked. There is a forest nearby. You can use it for training if you want, said Tizuna. Okay then thank you Naruto can you stay with Tizuna and his family to guard them if anything happens? Kakashi said as he pick himself up. Okay we are off and Naruto if anything happens use the flare to signal us, Kakashi said before leaving with Sasuke and Sakura. Half hour later, okay everyone, let's get to work and finish this bridge for our families, Tizuna said to his men. This bridge is massive and I have to protect all of these workers, Naruto thought before doing a couple of hand signs. Shadow clone jutsu, Naruto said and in a proof of smoke 30 Naruto's appeared who then all scatter and hide around the bridge while the real Naruto he left the bridge and went into the forest. Each of my clones possess the same high sensor skill as me so they will be able to know if any enemies are coming, thought Naruto. 
As Naruto continued to walk through the forest he then decided to use his sensor ability to find any other shinobi in the area and to make sure that he doesn't run into Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakura because Kakashi would get angrily at him for leaving Tazuna and his men. Kakashi sensei and the others are a bit to the east but I can't seem to find anybody else maybe Gato has barrier jutsu around his secret base perhaps, Naruto thought before he bit one of his fingers which drew blood then he wiped it on his right palm then he did a couple of hand signs before slamming his right hand down to the ground. Summoning jutsu, Naruto said as a seal appeared on the ground around his right hand and in proof of smoke a orange fox that had a headband similar to Naruto's. Hey Naruto, said the fox. Hi Shingo. I need your help, said Naruto. Sure what do you need? Asked Shingo. I can't seem to find a certain base which I know will have people who are able to use chakra but still I should be able to sense them and I know there isn't anything wrong with my senses because I can still sense my teammates, Naruto explained. Any ideas what exactly I should smell for? Asked Shingo. Try smelling something like alcohol or even drugs, said Naruto. Yeah I smell a whole lot of it, said Shingo. Okay. Led me towards Shingo, said Naruto. Flashback two years ago a ten-year-old Naruto was currently at the Senju clan compound library researching on any way that could help him get stronger until he came across a rather interesting method on gaining a summoning contract, that was discovered by Jiraiya Ogata of the Sanin also known as the Toad Sage of Konoha, he was also Minato's sensei and as Naruto's godfather. Jiraiya had discovered it back during his early years when he was still a student of the third Hokage which was just to perform the summoning jutsu without having a contact with any summon clans which will then transport you to a summon region that you have a strong spiritual affectation towards that summon type. Naruto had wanted to ask Kosuke about it but couldn't since Kosuke was on a mission so Naruto performed the summon jutsu without having a summon contract he got himself teleport to a very large mountain forest that had trees that were far bigger than the ones that Naruto had ever seen in his life. Where am I? Naruto asked himself as he looked around until he saw a red fox which was the size of one of the Inazuka clan ninja hounds. Who are you human? The fox asked curiously. A taking fox, Naruto said surprised. Yeah I'm a talking fox so who are you, said the fox. My name is Naruto Namikaze, who are you and where am I? Naruto asked curiously. Well my name is Minos and you're at Kitsunden Forest but how did you get here Naruto? Minos asked curiously. I performed the summoning technique without having a contract which brought me here, said Naruto. Really well in that case you better come with me to see Lady Konkon, said Minos. Who's Lady Konkon? Naruto asked curiously. She's the head fox of Kitsune Den Forest, said Minos. Well let's go and see her then, said Naruto. Naruto then follow Minos up the mountain and along their way up Naruto saw other foxes that had blue and green fur coats and some of them were even far larger than Minos however as Naruto and Minos finally reached the top they then entered a temple and inside Naruto saw a golden fox who was laying down on something that looks like a throne which also had lots of pillows around it to make it more comfortable. Lady Konkon, I brought you someone to meet, said Minos. Oh who is it Minos? Konkon asked curiously. This boy's name is Naruto Namikaze and he said that he got here by doing the summoning technique without having a contract with any summon clans, said Minos. Interesting. Thought Konkon. So you came here through the use of summoning technique, said Konkon. Yes, that is how it happened, said Naruto. May I ask why you did the summoning technique in the first place? Konkon asked curiously. I had read a book in my clan's compound library and I found out that man from my village called Jiraiya Ogata and he did the same thing that I have done perform the summoning technique without having a contract but he was transported to Mount Myoboku where the toads live and for the reason why I did it is because want to get stronger, said Naruto. For someone so young and already desires power, why is that if I may ask? Konkon asked curiously. Because I want to become stronger so that when I become a shinobi I won't get hurt by those who are close to me, said Naruto. I can sense a large power within you, what is it? Konkan asked curiously. You're probably sensing the biju that is sealed inside of me, said Naruto. So you're a jinchuriki then and may I ask which biju do you hold inside of you? Said Konkan. I have the nine-tailed fox inside of me, said Naruto. Perhaps that's the reason why he has a strong spiritual affection towards foxes, Konkan thought curiously. Naruto I have a very important question to ask you, Konkan asked curiously. Sure what is it? Naruto asked curiously. 
Seeing that you have an affection towards foxes, how would you like to become our very first summoner? Konkan asked curiously. Sure I will but why me? Naruto asked curiously. Well many of the foxes here want to see the human world and because we never had a summoner I think it is about time to do so, said Konkan. Okay then I will gladly become your first summoner, said Naruto. Excellent, Konkan said as she then used her tail to pick up a scroll that was behind her and place it down in front of Naruto. Now just bite one of your fingers and with the blood from it write down your name in the scroll which will make the contract between you and us Naruto, said Konkan. Naruto did exactly that. He bit one of his fingers and drew blood from it, then he used it to write down his name in the scroll. And there, Naruto said as he finished. Excellent, now you are our summoner Naruto Namikaze, said Konkan. Great, I hope that we'll work well with each other, said Naruto. The current time. Some time later at Gato's secret base. As Naruto follow Shingo deeper into the forest they finally found what they were looking for Gato's hidden headquarters as Naruto looked at it he saw that it wasn't a tall building but he guessed Gato had built it underground inside and this part was just the entrance however the thing that still caught his attention was that ever though he can see the base he still couldn't sense anyone from it. Shingo, let's do that jutsu before we go in, said Naruto. Right, said Shingo, ninja art. Beast sense connection, said Naruto. Ninja art. Human sense connection, said Shingo. This technique allow the summoner and their summon to connect their senses with each other in other words for a summon like a fox who are great at hiding they could watch events without being detected while the summoner will be able to watch it as well and also allow the summoner to speak with the summon though their thought. All right let's go, said Naruto. As they entered Gato's base they split up with Shingo turned invisible and went down one hallway while Naruto went the other way and used his chakra to walk on the walls. With Shingo inside a room. As Shingo walk around he suddenly smell fruit coming from a room and as he walk in and hid in the shadows just in case he saw a man resting on a bed while the boy who saved Zabuza's life and he wasn't wearing a mask so anyone could see that he had brown eyes and that he was sitting down next to Zabuza peeling apples until a small man who was wearing a business suit on and had sunglasses on with two other men that had sword strap on them. Zabuza, I have heard from my men that Tazuna is still alive. Why is that? The small man asked angrily. I underestimate the shinobi that Tazuna has hired Gato, said Zabuza. When I hire you I expect results since you are the demon of the mist, after all, said Gato. Don't worry about it I got a plan you see, said Zabuza. Oh what is it? Gato asked curiously. Simple really we let them get close to finish the bridge but then Haku and I come in and kill the Konoha ninja and Tazuna then we destroy the bridge which will destroy any remaining hope that these people have left, said Zabuza. Yes that would work perfectly however there is one more thing, said Gato. What is it? Zabuza asked curiously. If you do fail me again then neither you or your assistants will leave this land alive, Gato said as he reached out to grab Zabuza's face. But as he did, the boy that was sitting next to Zabuza quickly grabbed Gato's wrist and broke it. Air. Gato screams in pain. Don't you lay a finger on Zabuza, said the boy. Gato's bodyguards both went to grab their swords but Gato used his other hand to tell not to and then he went towards the door. Just make sure everything goes according to plan Zabuza or else, Gato said before he left the room. With Naruto at Gato's vault. As for Naruto he continued to go down in Gato's base he finally found Gato's vault where he was keeping everything that he has taken from the villagers and other things however it was guarded by eight men and was locked with the only way to get in was with a unique key that no doubt that Gato kept on him all time. So Naruto quickly performed a sound barrier seal then he knocked each guard as fast as possible after he tied them up and Naruto then placed his hand over the keyhole and channeled his chakra through it and molds his chakra which took the shape of the key and opened the vault. As he walked around in the vault he saw many books, paintings, statues, bags of money and then Naruto saw in the middle of the room a glowing green crystal orb that had red seals on it. This must be it, Naruto said as he looked at the orb. These seals are similar to the ones I've seen in books about the Uzumaki clan seals, this is probably the thing which is preventing me from sensing anyone here before but if that is the case where did Gato get it? Maybe he bought it somewhere and found out what it can do so he decided to use it so that if anyone ever sends any assassins after him as they wouldn't be able to find his base, thought Naruto. 
Naruto decided that he would come back later to take all of Gato's books, paintings, statues and money while also returning everything that Gato and his men had taken from the villagers. After Naruto left Gato's hidden headquarters he made his way back to the bridge. At the bridge, as Naruto arrived back at the bridge a few minutes later Kakashi arrived but he was alone and Naruto then came out of his hiding spot. Where are the other two? Naruto asked curiously. Still in the forest, said Kakashi. How's their training coming along? Naruto asked curiously. Well Sakura managed to understand the tree climbing practice and did it perfectly while Sasuke is having a bit of trouble with it so he's trying to get it and I ordered Sakura to keep doing it to improve her chakra amount, said Kakashi. So why did you come here then Kakashi? Tazuna asked. Well I came to see how things coming along, said Kakashi. We haven't had any trouble whatsoever which is kind of making me worry, said Tazuna. I don't think they will be coming here soon, said Naruto. Why's that Naruto? Kakashi asked curiously. I think they intend to destroy the bridge just before you finish it, said Naruto. Why would they do that when they could just destroy it now? Tazuna asked curiously. Because I believe Gato would want to destroy any remaining hope that you have left because that's the kind of monster he is, said Naruto. How do you know that Naruto? Kakashi asked curiously. Just think about it, it's the best way to stop all attempts of rebellion against him in the future, Naruto said lying as he didn't want Kakashi to know how exactly he knew Gato's plan. I see your point, it would be better for him in that way, Naruto, said Kakashi. Okay you three today while I'm guarding Tazuno, Naruto will remain here with you to supervise over your training, said Kakashi. What, no way Kakashi-sensei, why should we listen to him? Sasuke should be in change, Sakura shouted angrily. He said supervise not in change, do you ever listen to anyone other than yourself or Sasuke? Naruto said annoyed. Now Sakura, the reason why I'm having Naruto supervising your training is because he already knows the tree climbing practice, okay, Kakashi explained. Prove it, Sasuke said, annoyed by the fact that Naruto might know another technique before him. Remember back during my fight against Zabuza when I was trapped in his water prison jutsu, Naruto walked towards us across the water's surface. That was the water surface walking practice, which is a more advanced than the tree climbing practice, meaning he would also knows that as well, Kakashi explained. Maybe Kosuke taught them to him to help Naruto to get a better control over his chakra because he has a large amount. Kakashi thought curiously. So who was it that taught you these techniques, Naruto? Sasuke asks curiously while Sakura looks at him also wanting to know. Is he actually going to tell them? Kakashi thought curiously as he watched his three genin. Sign. His name is Kosuke Maruboshi, said Naruto. Kosuke Maruboshi. Who's that? Sasuke asked curiously. Kosuke Maruboshi is a shinobi back at the leaf and he is reputed as the eternal genin while he's around the same age as the Hokage but still a genin, Naruto explained, shocking both Sasuke and Sakura. He's that old but still a genin. Why would you want to be trained by someone like him? Sakura asks in a mocking tone however she quickly went quiet when she saw the looks that she was getting from both Naruto and Kakashi. Sakura, do not ever underestimate Kosuke Maruboshi. Kakashi said in a serious tone. Why is that Kakashi-sensei? Sasuke asked curiously, seeing how Naruto and Kakashi were behaving. You see many years ago back during the time of the second Hokage. Kosuke was in a hurry to be promoted to the rank of Chunin and it caused he to make a reckless decision which cost him the lives of his two teammates. Kosuke was so ashamed of himself, he felt he was not worthy of being promoted beyond the rank of Genin. However despite this, he continued to train arduously to improve his skills, something that was insisted upon him by the second Hokage, Naruto explained. So even though he's still a Genin, that doesn't mean that he's weak, said Kakashi. How come you know Naruto? Sakura asked curiously. The Hokage placed him as my caretaker and he thought that since he was taking care of me then he might as well train me and why would I say no to someone who has been a shinobi for so long and been taught by the second Hokage, said Naruto. He has a point, someone who has been around that long would definitely know some useful things, thought Sasuke. I'm guessing that the third Hokage had already told you that I've been trained by Uncle Kosuke. Naruto asks Kakashi. Yes. 
He told me after he assigned all the new teams together, said Kakashi. Sometime later, after Kakashi had left Sasuke and Sakura, began doing their training with Sasuke still trying to climb a tree with his chakra but he was failing. While Sakura was able to it thanks to her better control over her chakra however that is only because she didn't possess as much chakra as Sasuke so she continually trained by climbing the tree using only her chakra to increase her amount of chakra and while they were busy training Naruto was leaning against a tree reading a book about Fuenjutsu as he wanted to improve his skill with sealing as on his mother's side they were masters of the skill however after seeing Sasuke falling again and knowing what his problem was Naruto decided to give Sasuke some advice to help speed up his process. You're doing it wrong you know, Naruto said looking at Sasuke. Don't you think I already know that? Sasuke said angrily, thinking that Naruto was mocking him. And there's your problem, said Naruto. My problem? What is it? Sasuke asks angrily. You ain't focused, you need to calm down, it won't work if you're angrily Sasuke, said Naruto. What, are you saying that whenever someone uses this technique they ain't angrily even during a fight, that's stupid of cause their anger, said Sasuke. True but unlike you they have fully mastered this technique so that even though they are angry they can still use it, Naruto explained. Fine I'll try to be calm, Sasuke said before he closed his eyes and took a deep breath and then release and after a bit when Sasuke had finally calmed down he tried the tree climbing practice, again however this time he managed to stick to the tree for a bit before falling back down but he managed to land on his feet. I did it. Sasuke thought surprised as he didn't think Naruto's advice would work. I know you could do it Sasuke. Sakura shouted happily. Keep doing that and you'll get the handle of it plus it also improves your chakra control and increases the amount of chakra you have, Naruto explained. Doing this will also increase the amount of chakra I have. Sasuke asked curiously. Yep, that's the reason why Kakashi Sensei is making Sakura keep doing it, said Naruto. What's that supposed to mean? Sakura shouted angrily. It means the amount of chakra that you possess is weak, as I have more chakra in my finger than you have in your entire body, said Naruto. Naruto, stop lying to make yourself look cool. Sakura shouted angrily. Oh you don't believe me, then watch this, Naruto said as he walked up to a tree. He then lifted his index finger up and channeled his chakra into it before touching the tree and suddenly a massive crack appeared on the tree. What the hell? Sakura shouted in shock. How can you possess so much chakra? Sasuke asks curiously while hoping that maybe Naruto knew a secret method on how to obtain more chakra and will tell him as having a large amount of chakra would help him to get his revenge. I was born with it and I have trained a lot, Naruto said simply much to Sasuke's disappointment. There's no need to tell them about the Kyubi, Naruto thought before he went back to read his book. Later that day, after Sasuke and Sakura done had their training they went back to Tezuno's home to rest while Naruto decided to go for a walk and he was currently walking down a street where he saw many homeless people which angered him and he swore that he will return to them what Gato had stolen from them. Hey, do you know where some empty space is around here? Naruto asks a homeless man. Yeah I sure do, said the homeless man. Then can you show me, if you do I'll give you a reward, Naruto asked. Yeah sure why not it's not like I got nothing better to do then sit here, said the homeless man. Hey you lot, if you come as well there will also be something for you as well, Naruto said to the other homeless people. Like what? One of the homeless people asked curiously. Come along and find out, said Naruto. As the homeless man that Naruto talked with first led him and the other homeless people to some empty space where Naruto saw some rubble. Probably Gato's men did this out of fun or they were ordered to, Naruto thought. Here we are, said the homeless man. Now then for your reward, Naruto said before he started doing hand signs for a jutsu that he had learned from Tenzo. Wood style. Four pillar house jutsu, Naruto said as he slammed his hands on the ground and then suddenly multiple fully built wooden houses burst out from the ground. W what the hell, all the homeless people shouted in shock. There's your reward, a place to call home, Naruto said happily. How can we ever repay you? The man asks happily with tears going down his face. Don't worry about it, just help each other out as after all everyone deserves a home, Naruto said with a smile before he walked away back to Tazuna's home. Later that day at Tazuna's house, 
Everyone was in Tazuno's living room except for Tsunami Shi was in the kitchen making dinner for everyone while Tazuno was talking with Kakashi. Naruto was reading a book. Sasuke was resting from all of his training and was thinking of ways how's he going to hurt his older brother. Sakura daydreaming about her marrying Sasuke and in the corner of the room was Tazuna's grandson Inari. Why are you even trying? Inari asks. Everyone stopped what they were doing and turned their heads to look at Inari. There's no point fighting against Gato. He always wins. He's just too strong. It would be better if you just leave and save yourself before he kills you too, said Inari. HMPH nobody is stronger than a member of the Uchiha clan, Sasuke said proudly. Yeah Sasuke is right, said Sakura. You don't know anything about pain, we live in fear while you live in peace, said Inari. Then you really don't know anything about what Konoha is truly like, Naruto said as he got up and walked towards the door. Naruto, where are you going? Sakura asks. To get some fresh air, said Naruto. You really shouldn't go anywhere without backup, said Kakashi. I'll be fine, Naruto said before he left Tazuno's house. A few moments later Indri went back to his room. I'm sorry about Indri, he hasn't been the same since his stepfather Kaiza was killed by Gato and his men, said Tazuna. If you don't mind me asking what happened, Kakashi asked. A few years ago before Gato arrived here at the land, of waves Inari fell into the ocean but he was saved. By Kaiza afterwards Kaiza became a role model for Indri and he had a saying, protecting the things you love with both arms. Eventually Kaiza married Tsunami but one day there was a flood that was going to destroy everything in the village and there was only one way of stopping it by closing two large gates however nobody could reach them because it was on the other side of the overflowing river but Kaiza just dived in and managed to close them, said Tazuna. Wow, he sounds like a really great man, said Sakura. Yes he was until Gato and his men showed up, said Tazuna. What did they do? Kakashi asked. First Gato bought out or blackmail every single shipping company here then he started to overpriced every little thing until Kaiza tried to stop him but Gato had his men beat Kaiza down but then Gato had his men chop off his arms to mock Kaiza saying and after Gato brought Kaiza out in public to executioner him because Gato wanted to show everyone what happens to them if they ever go against him, said Tazuna. That's terrible, Sakura said, upset. A few moments later Sakura decided to ask her sensei a question. Kakashi sensei, what did Naruto mean that we don't know anything about what Konoha is truly like? Sakura asked curiously while Sasuke was also curious. You may have noticed back in the village how the villagers treat Naruto, said Kakashi. What do you mean Kakashi? Tazuna asked curiously. It's not my place to say but what I can tell you is that there's a reason why Naruto isn't the friendliest guy in the world expert to those who are close to him, said Kakashi. The next day at Tazuna's house. Almost everyone was in Tazuno's living room except for Indri who was in his bedroom and Naruto who hasn't come back last night but Kakashi wasn't worried about Naruto as he knew Naruto could handle himself easily against thugs or bandits and if Naruto was fighting against a shinobi Kakashi would have sense it. Tazuna, I think today's the day that Zabuza will be coming, said Kakashi. Yeah I think you're right, said Tazuna. But Kakashi sensei Naruto didn't come back last night. Sakura asked curiously. Yeah you're right Sasuke could you find Naruto, said Kakashi. Why me? Sasuke asks, annoyed. I need to stay here to guard Tazuna and you will be able to find him a lot quicker than Sakura would, said Kakashi. Fine I will, Sasuke said as he got up and walked out through the door. With Naruto in the forest. Naruto was currently laying on the ground resting in the middle of the forest after doing his intense training last night however he wasn't alone as the boy who was with Zabuza at Gato's base Haku walking through the forest collecting herbs to increase Zabuza's healing process until he came upon a sleeping Naruto and he immediately recognized his as one of the genin that is guarding Zabuza and his target. He's the one who gave Zabuza a lot of trouble, it would be best if I take him out here and now, Haku thought as he walked towards the sleeping Naruto. As Haku stood over the sleeping Naruto he was thinking about which way he should kill him without it being painful. You know it's creepy to stare at someone while they are sleeping, you know, Naruto said, surprising Haku. I'm sorry I thought that you might have been injured, said Haku. No I'm not but thank you for caring a little about me anyways who are you, said Naruto. My name is Haku and you are? Haku asked, Naruto Namikaze, 
said Naruto. If I may ask if you are out here. Haku asked curiously. Training, said Naruto. Training ain't you strong enough? Haku asked curiously. No I'm not because in this shinobi world you need strength to survive here well that's what I believe anyways, said Naruto. I see well I believe that once you find someone that is precious you will become far stronger in order to protect them, said Haku. That's a nice way of thinking, said Naruto. Tell me Naruto, do you have someone precious to you where you come from, Haku asked curiously. Some, Naruto said thinking about those who are close to him back in Konoha. I see then it's good you have people you care about, said Haku. I'm guessing that you have someone who's precious to you then. Naruto asked curiously. Yes I do and I will do anything to help him to achieve his goal, said Haku. Well that person is very lucky to have you, said Naruto. Thank you anyways, I need to be going to take these herbs back, said Haku. As Haku started to walk away from Naruto he took a couple steps before to say one last thing. You will become stronger, I'm sure of it, said Haku. Thanks maybe next time I'll show you how strong I've become when we meet on the bridge hunter Nin, Naruto said, shocking Haku. He knew that it was me, thought Haku. When did you realize it was me? Haku asked curiously. The moment I saw you I could tell it was you because of your chakra signature, said Naruto. He can find an individual person by their own chakra signature so he's a powerful sensory type as well he's going to be trouble fighting when Zabuza uses his hidden mist jutsu against them, thought Haku. So why didn't you just surprise attack me then? Haku asked curiously. I could ask why you didn't attack me when you had the chance, said Naruto. In any case I wasn't lying about needing to leave so see you on the bridge, Haku said before he walked away. Just then Sasuke was walking towards Naruto and he walked past Haku and gave him a quick glance. She's pretty cute, Sasuke thought not knowing that Haku was actually a guy. Naruto, where have you been? Kakashi sensei is wondering, Sasuke asked curiously. I've been here training, said Naruto. Training in what exactly? Sasuke asked curiously. Stuff, Naruto said simply. What exactly does he do to become stronger? Sasuke thought curiously. Well anyways better not keep Kakashi sensei waiting too long. Naruto said as he got up and headed back to Tazuna's but then stopped as he thought of something fun to do. Oh by the way Sasuke that person just then in pink was a guy. Naruto said shocking Sasuke. Once Naruto and Sasuke got back to Tazuna's house Kakashi ordered Naruto to remain behind to protest Tazuna's family and rest up a bit while he, Sakura, Sasuke and Tazuna headed towards the bridge but once they got there they saw something shocking the bodies of all the workers were all over the place but thankfully they were still alive. W what has happened here? Tazuna asks in shock. There's no doubt about it, it's Zabuza, Kakashi informed everyone. Sorry for keeping you waiting Kakashi however I see that those brats of yours are still trembling in fear how pitiful, Zabuza's voice coming from somewhere within the mist. I ain't trembling out of fear, I'm trembling out of excitement, Sasuke said bravely. Oh you're different from last time, Zabuza said within the mist before he and Haku appeared on the bridge. Unlike in canon Zabuza hasn't changed his outfit so he's still wearing the same outfit from last time. Haku, you'll fight the kid with black hair, said Zabuza. Yes, Zabuza, said Haku. Sakura, you stay close to Tazuna and guard him while Sasuke and I will handle Zabuza and his partner, said Kakashi. Just then four Zabuzas appeared surrounding Kakashi, Sasuke, Sakura and Tazuna however just as the four. Water clones were about to attack them Sasuke quickly drew out his Tonto blade and slash each of the four Zabuza water clones causing them to turn back into puddles of water. Don't underestimate a member of the Uchiha clan, Sasuke said proudly. Oh so you can see that they were, water clones, can you? That genin has improved a bit, it looks like you got yourself a rival Haku, said Zabuza. So it would seem, said Haku. I have been looking forward to this fight so don't you dare disappoint me, Sasuke said with a smile. Then let's see just how much you have improved then, Haku you know what to do, said Zabuza. Yes Zabuza, Haku said before he started to spin around so fast making it almost impossible to see him at all however as he was close enough to Sasuke to cut him with his kunai, Sasuke had managed to block it with his tanto blade. 
Impressive you managed to block my attack, not many people can keep up with my speed, said Haku. You shouldn't expect anything less from a Uchiha like me, Sasuke said proudly. However I had a key advantage over you, said Haku. Oh yeah like what? Sasuke asked curiously. First we are surrounded by water and second you only have one arm left to defend yourself from my next attack, said Haku. So what? I'll just counter it, said Sasuke. I highly doubt you can counter something like this with ease, Haku said as he started to do hand signs with only just one hand. What? He can perform ninjutsu with just one hand. Sasuke thought in shock while also curious if he could do it as well. I never heard of a ninja that can perform ninjutsu with only one hand. Kakashi said in shock while just like Sasuke he was also curious if he could do it as well as it is definitely a useful skill to have. Haku is a prodigy like no other Kakashi, Zabuza said proudly. Water style. 1000 flying water needles of death. Haku said as he gathered water from what used to be the four Zabuza's water clones and from the misty air and created many needles which surrounded him and Sasuke and then Haku used his control over them to fire them only at Sasuke. Sasuke. Sakura shouted in worry for her crush. I have to remember Kakashi's training. I gotta stay calm and focus my chakra and summon it at once onto my feet just like with the trees. Sasuke thought as he used his chakra to enhance his jumping speed for a brief moment to avoid Haku's needles. He vanished, Haku said in shock but as he looked up he saw Sasuke who was performing a couple hand signs. Fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu, Sasuke said as he spits a volley of small fireballs down at Haku however he managed to dodge each of them but then Sasuke appeared right behind Haku. You're not as fast as you think you are, from this moment forward you'll be the one trying to avoid my attacks. Sasuke said as he and Haku clash again with Sasuke grabbing a kunai which he throws at Haku's head however Haku manages to duck it but that had allowed Sasuke to kick Haku in the face sending flying back to Zabuza. That's not possible, nobody's faster than Haku, Zabuza thought in shock. You thought you were faster than me as if, now then let's see what else I'm better than you are at, Sasuke said proudly. You made a huge mistake underestimate these genin Zabuza. You brought out Sasuke's determination to prove to you that you're wrong about him as he's one of the most skilled young fighter back at the Hidden Leaf and Sakura here is one of the most brightest in her class and last but not least is Naruto Namikaze who was this year rookie of the year back at the academy in Konoha and you have already seen that he always has a trick under his sleeves, said Kakashi. Ha ha Haku if we keep going like this we will be the ones in trouble so stop messing around and finish it already, said Zabuza. Right. Haku said as he started to release his chakra into the air. What is he planning on doing? Sasuke thought curiously. I am sorry it has come to this, Haku said as he started doing hand signs. The air it's getting colder, Sasuke said as he was now able to see his breath. Ice style. Crystal ice mirror jutsu, Haku said before ice started to form behind Sasuke and then more started to form around him making 12 ice mirrors hovering above the ground then 8 more form hovering above the first 12 and finally 1 ice mirror form facing downwards. Ice style. Then that must mean he's a member of the Yuki clan and what is that jutsu? How does it work? Kakashi said out loud. Haku then walked up to one of the ice mirrors and then he walked inside of it where his reflection appeared in all the mirrors. What kind of jutsu is this? Sasuke thought curiously and a bit worried. I have to help him, Kakashi thought as he tried to run towards Sasuke but he was stopped by Zabuza. If you want to enter that fight then you'll have to go through me first but your boy has no chance against that jutsu, he's already finished, said Zabuza. Now then I will show you what speed truly is, Haku said as he prepared his sanbons. Around the same time at Tazuna's house. When Naruto finally woke up he sensed that his teammates and Tazuna were at the bridge fighting against Zabuza and Haku so he got up and ran towards the bridge to help with the fight however a bit after he left one of Tazuna's wooden wall was cut down into pieces and walk in was Gato's two samurai bodyguards. What do you want? Tsunami asks afraid of her own and her son's life. Our boss Gato wants you to come with us, so if you come willingly then you won't be harmed, said the samurai who was wearing a blue jacket. Mom. Inari said crying. Should we take the brat as well? Said the samurai with the eye patch. No, the boss only wants the bridge builder's daughter so just leave the brat here, said the samurai who was wearing a blue jacket. No you wouldn't, said Inari. 
Stay out of the way brat or else, said the samurai with the eye patch as he kicked Inari to the floor. No please don't hurt him, I will do anything you want just don't hurt my son, Tsunami pleaded. It looks like your mother saved you brat, you better be grateful, said the samurai who was wearing a blue jacket. Come on, let's go, said the samurai with the eye patch as he tied a rope around Tsunami's arms and pulled her out of the house. As the samurai took Tsunami away leaving Indri alone and crying. Why am I so weak? I can't protect my mom, Indri thought before he then started to think about the people who were risking their lives for his home and then Indri remember his stepfather's saying, if something is truly important to you even if it's heartbreaking. Even if it's sorrowful you keep on trying and trying, even if you lose your life, you keep on protecting it with these two arms then even if you do die you leave behind the proof that you are a man forever. Indri then whip away his tears. Protect what is precious to you with both arms. Indri said out loud before he ran outside and caught up to the two samurai and his mother. Mom, Indri shouted, Indri, what are you doing? Tsunami asked worried for her son's life. Yeah what are you thinking of doing brat do you want to die or something? Asked the samurai who was wearing a blue jacket. I won't let you take someone else who is important from me ever again, said Indri. Indri you can't win against them, please just ran away, Tsunami shouted while crying, hoping that Indri would listen to her. I was gonna let you live, Brad but now I'm going to end you, said the samurai with the eye patch. Don't take too long, the boss wants us back with the women as soon as possible, said the samurai who was wearing a blue jacket. Please don't hurt him, Tsunami pleaded to the samurai. To late lady I made up my mind so say your last goodbye to your brat said the samurai with eye patch as he drew his blade and changed at Indri. No, Indri, Tsunami shouted with her eyes closed, not wanting to see her child be murdered right in front of her. However, just as the samurai swung his sword downwards he didn't kill Indri or even harm him instead he had cut a wooden log in half. What the, the samurai with an eye patch said in shock. Where the brat goes, he was there a second ago. The samurai who was wearing a blue jacket asked in shock but then realized something was off. Then he looked down at the rope and saw that it was cut and Tsunami was also gone. Where's she gone? said the samurai who was wearing a blue jacket. What I hate most in this world is that people like you who think that they can do whatever you want to anyone and get away with it, a voice said which sounded pissed off. As both samurais turn around they saw someone who was on their knees and had Tsunami in one arm and Indri in the other. Who the hell is that? The samurai with eye patches asked angrily. Naruto, Indri said happily. Who the hell are you kid? The samurai who had an eye patch asked. As Naruto got up he turned around and started to walk towards the two samurai with an angry look on his face. Someone who had enough scum like you, Naruto said before he disappeared in a burst of speed and then both samurai were in the air in pain. What just happened? Both samurais thought before they passed out from the pain. Wow, Indri thought as he watched what had just happened right in front of him one moment both samurais were fine and the next minute they were beaten. Naruto then turns around and walks back to Tsunami and Indri just as the samurai fall and clash on the ground. I'm sorry I wasn't here when they came, Naruto apologized, bowing his head. It's okay at least you came before they did anything worse to us, said Tsunami. It will be safer if you two go somewhere so that Gato's men wouldn't be able to find you, said Naruto. But where are you going, Naruto? Indri asked, to help my teammates and sensei out, said Naruto. Naruto then vanishes in a golden flash leaving a shock Indri and Tsunami behind. What the, how did he do that? Both Indri and Tsunami thought. Back at the bridge, as Haku started to throw many sanbons at Sasuke cutting him all over his body as well as being impaled into him causing Sasuke yell out in pain. Sasuke, Kakashi said worried for his student's life. Sasuke, Sakura shouted in fear for Sasuke's life. Just try and help him and I'll kill the old man and the girl in a heartbeat, said Zabuza. Just as Haku prepared to throw more sanbons, Sasuke's secretary did a couple of hand signs and just before Haku started his attack again Sasuke unleashed his jutsu. Fire style. Fireball jutsu, Sasuke said as he unleashed a massive fireball at one of the ice mirrors hoping to melt it, however as the smoke cleared it revealed it didn't do anything to the ice mirror at all. You won't be able to melt these mirrors with your flames, 
This isn't your normal ice, Haku said just before he started throwing more of his Sanban at Sasuke. Damn it he's right the only way I can melt those mirrors if I knew how to use my blaze style bloodline but I don't know how to use it yet. Sasuke thought angrily at himself for not knowing how to use the bloodline that only his family within the Uchiha clan possessed however just as Haku threw his sanbons at Sasuke something unexpected happened where Sasuke managed to block each of them with his Tonto blade. How did he manage to do that? Haku thought but then he saw that Sasuke's eye had changed from black into a blood red color with one tomos in each of them, his eyes. They'd changed. I have finally awakened my clan's legendary bloodline, the Sharingan, Sasuke said proudly. My first step towards achieving my revenge against him, thought Sasuke. It doesn't matter if you have unlocked your clan's bloodline you still wouldn't win this battle, Haku said before he began to throw his sanbons. This time was slightly different because now Sasuke was able to see where they were coming from and so he was able to both dodge and block some of them with his Tonto blade however even though Sasuke was able to see them now his body still wasn't fast enough to block or dodge all of them. Damn it this shouldn't be happening. I finally have the Sharingan now he shouldn't stand a chance against me, thought Sasuke. Simply having a bloodline doesn't make you stronger. They just give you an advantage over your opponent unless your opponent has the same bloodline as you then it comes down to who has mastered it better than who, said Haku. Air. Sasuke yells out in pain as Haku Sanban cuts him all over his body and it causes him to let go of his Tonto blade where Haku throws one of his Sanban which knocked it outside his crystal ice mirror, dome. I'm sorry but I can't stay with you, I need to go and help Sasuke, please forgive me, said Sakura. I understand Sakura now go and help him, Tazuna said just as Sakura ran over to grab Sasuke's Tonto blade and then went towards his and Haku's battle. Sakura, Kakashi said worried for his other student's life. Sakura jumped up into the air and threw it back to him however as the Tonto blade was close enough Haku's attacks on Sasuke stopped because his upper body came out the ice mirror and caught the Tonto blade. Oh no he caught it. Sakura said panicked thinking that he was now going to kill Sasuke with his own Tonto blade all because of her. Nice try, said Haku. But just then out of nowhere a shuriken came out and hit Haku's mask which cracked it and caused Haku to fall out of the ice mirror. Where did that shuriken come from? Haku said as he looked around as he got back up. Who threw that? Sakura asked out loud. Someone else is here. Zabuza thought as he already had a good idea who it was. As everyone was wondering where the shuriken came from two unique kanai were thrown at them one at Sakura and the other at Sasuke however as Kakashi saw the one by Sakura he immediately recognized the type of kanai. That is the same type of kanai that Minato sensei used for the flying thunder jutsu, Kakashi thought in shock. Suddenly in a quick golden flash Naruto appeared standing over Sasuke where he grabbed Sasuke by his collar before they both disappeared in another quick flash of gold and then reappeared next to Sakura. What the, Sasuke, Sakura said before she quickly ran to Sasuke and grabbed hold of him and held him. That was, flying thunder jutsu, while the color of the flash is a bit different, however there's no mistake about it but how is that possible? Nobody other than Minato sensei knew how to perform it, so how does Naruto know? Kakashi thought in shock, what just happened? One moment I was surrounded by that guy's ice mirrors but now I'm here next to everyone else. What did he do just now? Sasuke thought, wondering what other skill does Naruto possess. Sorry I'm late, Naruto said as turn around to look at Zabuza and Haku. I was wondering where you were brat, Zabuza said while inside he was trying to figure out how the blonde managed to do what he just did. Well I'm here now, Naruto said with a smile as he released his Tonto blade from its seal. Naruto, I'll fight Zabuza while you can handle that masked guy, said Kakashi. Sure thing Kakashi sensei, said Naruto. But be careful he's very skillful and he possesses the ice style bloodline. He's somehow able to perform jutsus with just one hand, Kakashi explained, surprising Naruto. That's both an impressive and annoying ability, said Naruto. Haku you'll handle that blonde brat while I'll finally end my unfinished business with Kakashi, said Zabuza. Yes, Zabuza, said Haku. Haku then did hand signs which made his ice mirrors scatter around the bridge while Zabuza also did the same hand signs that he did back during his first fight against Kakashi. Hidden Mist Jutsu, 
Zabuza said as the mist covered the entire bridge once again. Naruto using his sensing ability to be able to track Haku within the mist and they began their battle within it while Kakashi and Zabuza fought against each other as well. The fight between Kakashi and Zabuza will remain the same as in canon so instead we're only focus on the fight between Naruto and Haku. As Naruto battles against Haku within the mist Haku uses ice style to create a couple of ice spikes which he fires at Naruto however he was able to sense them coming and managed to shatter them by using his chakra mold ability to create chains which impaled the ice spikes. That weapon making ability of yours is indeed impressive, said Haku. Why thank you and so is your ice style, said Naruto. Haku then did a couple hand signs and said, ice style. Ice blades and then both of his hands began to glow bright blue in a knife-like shape before ice began to freeze over them and as Naruto and Haku clash again attacking and blocking each other attacks until Haku managed to back away from Naruto where then he pointed his right arm at Naruto and he channeled his chakra into the ice that was around his hand where he began to fire multiple ice needles at Naruto which turned into ice needles but Naruto managed to block them by using his Tonto blade. As Naruto did that he also moved quickly closer to Haku and as he finally reached the Naruto swing his Tonto blade downwards but Haku caught it by doing an X shape with his arms and thanks to his hand being frozen he was unharmed by the attack however Naruto used this as opportunity as he used his chakra mold to form another Tonto blade which he swing it upwards and managed to shatter the ice surrounding Haku's hands. Damn it he's far more skilled than I had originally thought. Haku thought as he backed a bit so that Naruto's Tonto blade wouldn't hit him however Naruto then kicked Haku in his stomach which sent him flying backwards but Haku managed to stop himself. Haku quickly went and jumped into one of his crystal ice mirrors to ready his assault on Naruto however Naruto threw one his unique kunai slightly above the crystal ice mirrors that Haku was in and he then appeared behind and chakra chains burst out from Naruto's back and began to wrap themselves around but Haku managed to escape before being caught by Naruto's chakra chains Haku's crystal ice mirrors it was shattered. What? Haku thought in surprise as nobody had ever managed to shatter his crystal ice mirrors before. I'll just shatter your mirrors every time you try to use them, said Naruto. Then I'll just create more crystal ice mirrors, said Haku. Do that and you'll run out of chakra in no time, said Naruto. He's right, creating the crystal ice mirrors requires a bit of chakra, thought Haku. Naruto then began doing a couple hand signs and said, Blaze style, fire dragon bomb jutsu, where he then exhaled a yellow flame breath from his mouth which burnt the ground as it made its way towards Haku who was surprised. He possesses blaze style, this is bad, Haku thought as he did a couple of hand signs. Ice style. Ice wall jutsu, Haku said as he slammed his hands on the ground and a wall of ice quickly formed right in front of him which protected him from Naruto's attack but it wasn't enough as it melting away immediately and while he was able to jump away before being killed by however Haku's right shoulder was badly burnt. Haku then placed his left hand on his burn and used his ice to help him before doing hand signs with just one hand and said, Ice style. Ice sword, where he then created a sword made out of ice. As Naruto and Haku charged at each other again battle with their weapons Naruto with his Tonto blade and Haku with ice sword as they attack each other their slashes were so fast that civilians and many other shinobi wouldn't be able to see them however during their battle the air around Haku's free hand began to freeze and he tried to grab Naruto by his wrist with it. Naruto saw this and so he moved causing Haku to catch his sword instead which started to freeze revealing that Haku can freeze things just by touching something however just as he tried to grab Naruto's wrist again Naruto quickly used the flying thunder jutsu to get away from him just in time. So he can freeze things by touching them. So he'll be dangerous to fight against in taijutsu, thought Naruto. Haku then did a hand sign which made all of his remaining crystal ice mirrors surround both himself and Naruto. When he tries to shatter one of my crystal ice mirrors that's when I'll strike, thought Haku. He thinks I can only shatter his crystal ice mirrors only one at the time, Naruto thought before he began to channel his chakra mold and suddenly chakra chains burst out from his back which impaled all of Haku's crystal ice mirrors and then shattered all of them. Just then a loud noise caught everyone's attention which sounded like many chirping birds and as Haku turned to see where it was coming from he saw that Zabuza was in danger and Kakashi's hand was covered in lightning and was heading straight for Zabuza's chest. That's Kakashi's Chidori technique, 
Naruto thought which surprised him as he didn't know how he knew about Kakashi's signature jutsu which he had created back during the Third Great Ninja War and perfected once he had gotten his Sharingan eye from Obito. As Naruto and Haku turned to look at what was going on between Kakashi and Zabuza they saw eight hounds which were all different breeds and they were wearing blue vest and had Konoha headbands around their necks and all of them were had their fangs in Zabuza's shoulder, arms and his legs preventing him from moving while close by Kakashi was reading his, Chidori, to their fight. However just before Kakashi was about to finally finish Zabuza off one of Haku's, Crystal Ice Mirrors got in between Kakashi and Zabuza taking Kakashi's attack which managed to get halfway inside but it also damaged Kakashi's hand. Suddenly everyone heard clapping from one side of the bridge as they turned around to see who it was they saw Gato standing there with many of his henchmen. Gato what are you doing here? Zabuza asked. I came here to finish some loose ends like you, said Gato. What do you mean about that? Zabuza asked. I have decided that you and your partner are no longer of any use to my plans anymore so I am getting rid of you the fun away, said Gato. Gato then turned around to look at his men. Finish them all off and destroy once and for good and you all will be pay extra. Gato announced which then got cheers. Many of Gato's thugs who had a crossbow all lined up and they aimed at Kakashi and Zabuza but just as they fired them someone called out. Earth style. Mud wall jutsu. Then a large slab of earth rises from the ground to defend both Kakashi and Zabuza from the attack and as they turn around they see Naruto with his hands on the ground meaning that he was the one who saved their lives. You two can't fight anymore so I'll handle this mess myself instead, Naruto said as he walked towards thugs. Ha ha you think a child can beat all of us, one of the thugs said in a mocking tone of voice. I'm not going to beat all of you, said Naruto. Then what are you going to do then kid? The same thug asked. I'm going to kill every single one of you, Naruto said in a serious tone before he quickly threw one of his unique kanai at the thug then in a quick gold flash Naruto appeared right in front of the thug and he slit his throat open killing him which shocked everyone. Why you little bastard? Another thug shouted as he charged at Naruto with a spear and he was aiming for Naruto's chest but just as he was about to reach him Naruto jumped slightly landing on the spear and then he created an axe which he embedded into the thug's skull. The other thugs all surrounded Naruto and were about to stab him from all points however just as they gathered around him Naruto kneeling down and unleashed many chakra chains coming from his back impaling many thugs in their chests killing them. Once they fading away then Naruto in a burst of pure speed disappeared from their sight and before anyone could think about it Gato's thugs started to drop dead on the floor one by one until there was only a few remaining and Naruto reappeared right in front of last few who were terrified. Don't just stand there kill him. Gato shouted angrily. B but he just killed most of us already, said one of the thugs. If you kill him I will pay you all ten times of what I promise. Gato shouted angrily. Screw you and your money I'm getting the hell out of here. One of the thugs ran towards one of sides of the bridge to escape but as he ran away he was slit in half by Naruto's wind slash. I said I was going to kill all of you and that is what I am going to do. Naruto said in a serious tone and he then went into a stance with his sword and started to channel his chakra through it. Air style. Great wind slash, Naruto said before he unleashed a larger version of the jutsu that he used against Kakashi back during the bell test which cut all the remaining thugs in half except for Gato who just stood there terrific. P please don't kill me I'll pay you anything you want I'll even leave this place for good, Gato begged on his knees. I ain't gonna do anything but I can't say for the villagers you tormented for years, Naruto said just before he punched Gato in the face breaking his nose and knocking him unconscious finally ending Gato's terror over the land of waves for good. Well shit, Zabuza said as he didn't expect all that. What else are you Naruto hiding? Kakashi thought. It has been a couple of days since the battle on the bridge and the end of Gato's reign of terror over the land of waves and now the bridge was finally completed bring a new start for the villagers meanwhile with team 7 after their battle Naruto, Sakura and Tazuna took Kakashi and Sasuke back to Tazuna's house so they could recover properly. While Naruto saw this as a perfect opportunity to go back to Gato's headquarters and so he used the seal that he left there to flash over there and then he made his way to Gato's vault where he went ahead and sealed up all of Gato's own money. Books, paintings, statues and the orb that had the seals on but as for all the money that Gato stolen from the villagers, 
Naruto planned to bring it to Tazuna who will return it but as Naruto was about to leave he sensed that both Zabuza and Haku was there as well most likely so that Zabuza could heal up properly as well. However over the past couple after Kakashi had finally recovered from his wounds he then began trying to get Naruto to answer on how does he knows one of his sensei's two most famous technique the flying thunder jutsu, but sadly for Kakashi, Naruto told him how he knew that technique when they're back in Konoha and he'll tell him with the third Hokage to save him explaining it twice as the Hokage would know as well and Kakashi accepted while he tried to figure out himself. However that didn't stop either Sasuke or Sakura from trying because Sasuke wanted to know how Naruto was able to get in and out of Haku's trap and perhaps he could use it against his older brother and as for Sakura she just wanted to know because after seeing that Sasuke wanted to know she thought that if she found out and tells him then Sasuke would be pleased with her. The day that Kakashi decided that they should be heading back to Konoha. Zabuza and Haku came to them and told them that they were planning on go back to the land of water to join the rebels who were fighting against the 4th Mizukage Karataki Yagura and to change Karigakar for the better. Not long after they bid their farewells it was time for Team 7 to be leaving as well but not before Tazuna announced the name he had chosen for their new bridge which was named after the person who protected his family and was the one who ended Gato, the Great Naruto Bridge. Back at Konoha within the Hokage's office. There stood all of Team 7 in front of Hiruzen finishing their report about their mission and to say that Hiruzen was shock was an understatement where he first heard about Naruto possessing his mother's chakra mold ability wasn't too surprising as he knew there was a chance he might have and he guess. But that was nothing compared to when he heard that Naruto somehow knows the flying thunder jutsu. The jutsu that was originally created by the second Hokage back during the Warring States period and later be used by Minato during the Third Great Ninja War which was where he earned the nickname, the Yellow Flash of the Leaf. Sasuke, Sakura you two can go home now while I will speak with your sensei and teammate alone, said Hiruzen. Both Sasuke and Sakura nodded their heads as even though they wanted to know Naruto's golden teleportation technique they weren't going to disobey orders from the third Hokage and once Sasuke and Sakura left the room Hiruzen turned his attention to Naruto. Now Naruto, I believe it's time for you to explain how is it you know the technique that my sensei had created and your father mastered, Hiruzen asks curiously. Honestly I don't know how I mastered it. A year ago I was trying to find a jutsu I could learn as I always found learning new ninjutsu to be fun and I came across of one of the fourth Hokage's custom made kanai which still had the seal formula on it which he used and even though I dislike him I ain't blind to how useful the technique is so I decided to learn it, Naruto explained. I see, but how is it you managed to master that jutsu Naruto as that technique is extremely difficult to learn as while you are ever talented however your father managed the technique thanks to him having from my student Jiraiya. Hiruzen asks curiously. That's the thing, Lord Hokage, it was easy to learn where it barely took me any time like I already knew how the technique works and I was just out of practice, Naruto said, surprising Hiruzen and Kakashi. You already knew how to use the technique, Kakashi said surprised. Yes, I can't explain it I just knew how to use it, Naruto said as it has always been like this for him. That will be all Naruto. However I must warn you that once other people learn that you know that technique many will be coming for you with some wanting to get it for themselves or to kill you as they know how dangerous the technique is because of your father, Hiruzen explained which Naruto nodded his head before he left the room leaving Hiruzen and Kakashi. Well that was interesting, Hiruzen said as he stroked his chin. What do you think that means Lord Hokage? How is that possible for Naruto to already knew the technique? Kakashi asks curiously. I honestly don't know however it would explain a few things about Naruto as from young age he has always displayed to be able to do things even when he has never been taught them, perhaps this is related to that. Hiruzen wondered. The next day, at training ground 7, first let me tell each of you how proud I am of you, that last mission didn't go as planned as it should have been AC rank but instead it clearly was AA rank however you managed to success it so take some pride in that. Kakashi said before he then took out four pieces of paper from his pocket. These here are slips of paper known as chakra receptive paper which we shinobi use to determine one's dominant chakra nature, Kakashi explained. But I already know what my chakra nature is, Kakashi sensei, as it's what every member of the Uchiha clan has, which is fire, said Sasuke. While that is true Sasuke however there may be a chance that you already possess a second chakra nature because of you being from the Uchiha clan and how much you have trained, 
Kakashi said which Sasuke nodded as it did make sense and he hoped it was true as it could help him become stronger. What chakra nature do you have, Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked curiously while both Naruto and Sasuke were also curious as well. My dominant chakra nature is lightning however at your age I had already developed a second chakra nature which was earth but after I was given my Sharingan I, I began using it to copy many jutsus even ones for chakra natures that I didn't possess I trained and thanks to me being a part of the Senju clan and though hard work I'm capable of using all five chakra natures, Kakashi explained. You're able to use all five chakra natures Kakashi sensei. That's amazing, Sakura said, amazed. Wow, you really are strong. Kakashi sensei, Naruto said, impressed. If what he's saying is true then he'll definitely be useful to learn from. Sasuke thought glad that he was training under someone who was strong. Kakashi sensei, are there other Jonin as strong as you in Konoha? Naruto asked curiously while Sasuke and Sakura were equally as curious about. Yes there are many skilled Jonin in Konoha, in fact two of whom are the senseis to your former classmates, said Kakashi. Who are they? Kakashi sensei. Sakura asked curiously. Well teammate sensei is Kurenai Yuhi and she's without any doubt is one of Konoha's best genjutsu users, said Kakashi. Now with my Sharingan finally awakened I should definitely learn more about genjutsu as they work perfectly with each other. Maybe I should get some advice from teammate sensei. Sasuke thought, thinking of ways to become stronger to be able to fight him as he was always great at using genjutsu. Maybe I should get some advice from this Kurenai Yuhi about how to improve my skill in Genjutsu since my chakra control was one of the best in our class and I don't want to fall under that Genjutsu from Kakashi Sensei ever again, Sakura thought. As for Team 10 Sensei that is Asuma Serutobi and he's the son of the third Hokage and since he's a member of the Serutobi clan that also means he possesses the Blaze style bloodline however he is also increasingly skilled in wind style jutsu and just like me he's also has a connection to the Senju clan as his mother Bawako Serutobi was originally a member before she married the third Hokage so that means Asuma also has a stronger body than most other shinobi, said Kakashi. We don't know anything about Bawako Serutobi other than she was the third Hokage wife and Asuma's mother, so why not add some facts? If you are friends with Team 10 Sensei then could you perhaps ask him to help me to learn how to control my Blaze style Kakashi Sensei? Sasuke asked, hoping that he can finally learn how to use it. Sure I can ask Asuma and exchange I'll offer to train one of his students. Anyways back to your chakra nature the chakra paper will react to your chakra depending on what kind of chakra nature you possess. Here let me show you, Kakashi said as he took one of the piece of paper from his other hand and began to channel his chakra into it causing it to crumpled immediately. As you can see the paper crumpled immediately once I changed my chakra into it which indicates my main affinity is lightning. Let's see what you guys have starting with you Sakura, Kakashi said as he handed over one of the pieces of paper to Sakura. As Sakura channels her chakra into the paper it immediately turns to dust, what does this mean Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked curiously. You have an affinity towards earth Sakura, now you Sasuke, Kakashi said as he handed over one of the pieces of paper to Sasuke. But I already know what my affinity is towards Kakashi sensei, it's fire like the rest of my clan especially since I also possess the blaze style bloodline, said Sasuke. While that is true Sasuke however given how much you have trained you could have unlocked your second nature, Kakashi explained. As Sasuke channels his chakra into the paper it immediately crumpled before it turned to ash which surprised Sasuke. Well there you have it Sasuke you have an affinity to both fire and lightning which is impressive for someone to have two chakra nature at your age already, said Kakashi. That's incredible Sasuke, I knew you were amazing, Sakura said, amazed at Sasuke. Good this will help me especially since I have a sensei. You also have an affinity towards lightning as well meaning he knows many powerful jutsus for it, Sasuke thought proudly. And finally let's see what your affinity is with Naruto, Kakashi said as he handed over the last chakra receptive paper to Naruto, however he already had an idea on what it was going to be. As Naruto channel his chakra into the paper, First it crumpled before it was cut into three slices and then one turned to ash, another turned to dust and the final became. Well it's just like what I thought, Kakashi thought. This means Naruto that possesses all five chakra natures, Kakashi said. 
shocking both Sasuke and Sakura while Naruto already knew what it was going to be as a few years ago he had already tested what his chakra nature was with Kosuke as while they already knew he would have water and earth with him possessing wood style but because he's the Kyuubi's Jinchuriki that meant he would possess energy style and have both fire and lightning chakra natures but they were curious on how he possessed wind chakra nature. It does makes sense as he does possesses water and earth since he has wood style. Then with him being the Kyuubi's Jinchuriki that grants him fire and lightning chakra natures as well as technically energy style however Kashina didn't know many jutsu for it expect for the few jutsus that were recorded after seeing them being used by members of the Hagoromo clan who possesses the bloodline. Him being a member of the Senju and Uzumaki clans and with all of the amount of training he has done could be the reason why he has wind chakra nature but it's still shocking to see a genin with all five chakra natures, thought Kakashi. In this story the Hagoromo clan possesses the energy style bloodline. But how is that possible Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked curiously while Sasuke was curious hoping if there was a way he could also have all five chakra natures as well. I don't know. I guess Naruto is just a special case, Kakashi said lying. To be able to use all five chakra natures and possess that unique teleportation technique along with that ability to create weapons from his chakra will definitely help Naruto to become stronger. I need that kind of power to achieve my revenge against him, Sasuke thought, annoyed. Okay now then I am going to teach each of you an ninjutsu for your chakra nature, said Kakashi. Really? Sakura said happily. Great. Naruto said happily. Good, Sasuke said with a small smile on his face. Earth style. Earth wall, Kakashi said as he slammed his hands down to the ground before a stone wall rose up. Sakura this jutsu is good to protect yourself and others, Kakashi said before he turned his attention to Naruto and Sasuke. Naruto, Sasuke I'm going to teach you two the same ninjutsu which is a lightning style jutsu, said Kakashi. Lightning style. Lightning ball, Kakashi said as he created five spheres of electrical energy that were floating in front of him. Naruto, Sasuke, this jutsu is a good jutsu for mid-range, when they make contact with your enemy, the spheres electrocute them and throw them back, Kakashi explained. Kakashi sensei, there is something else, said Sasuke. What is it Sasuke? Kakashi asked curiously. I also want to improve my skill with my Tonto blade and there's a technique that I wish to learn for it. Sasuke said before he pulled a scroll from his back pocket and handed it over to Kakashi who looked over it. Uchiha style. Halo dance, Kakashi said out loud as he read the scroll. It's a technique that Shisui used, said Sasuke. I see however in order for you to learn it you need to improve your chakra control and learn, chakra flow, Kakashi explained. What's, chakra flow, Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked curiously. Well, chakra flow refers to both the flowing of chakra through an object as well as any technique that increases the potency of a weapon by flowing chakra through it, Kakashi explained. So I need to learn, chakra flow, first in order to use this technique, said Sasuke. Yes, as the technique that you wish to learn requires it, said Kakashi. Are there any other ways to improve my chakra control? Sasuke asked curiously. Yes actually there is, as that is another thing that I want to teach the two of you which is the water surface walking practice, as not only it will help you to improve your chakra control but also because it's a useful technique to know, said Kakashi. Although there is another thing I want to teach as well. Naruto did Kosuke also teach you the chakra jump technique? Kakashi asked curiously. He did since he thought that it would be useful for me to know, Naruto answered. Okay then, Sasuke. Sakura I'm also going to teach you the chakra jump technique where you concentrate your chakra on your feet and release it allowing you to jump both high and far, said Kakashi. The sooner I learn these techniques the sooner I can learn chakra flow and then finally learn how to do the Uchiha style halo dance technique, thought Sasuke. Maybe if I learn both of these techniques as fast as the last one that will impress Sasuke, thought Sakura. Perhaps I could ask Kakashi sensei could I train with Yamato to work more on wood style as last time I saw Yamato said that he knew Kakashi personally or should I instead focus on my training on mastering that technique as that combined with my taijutsu would be both destructive and useful in battle, thought Naruto. And these three are training. 
I can do a bit of training on my own as there is that skill I want to recreate and perhaps afterwards I could even teach it to these three as it will definitely help them in the future. Thought Kakashi. So let's head towards the river to begin training, Kakashi said while Sasuke and Sakura nodded and began walking while Kakashi stopped Naruto. So Naruto I've been meaning to ask who was it that trained you, as you have shown skills that ain't taught in the academy and you are far stronger for someone who has just graduated. Kakashi asked curiously, the end. Now we will see you in the next video.